Why is my buttons not working? I pushed my buttons. Oh, nothing's working. Thank you for letting me know the space. I appreciate you. I guess I'll start over. Hello, everyone. Basie here. Welcome back to Corpse Factory. I thought this game was going to be done two streams ago. Maybe this will be the, the final finale. The, the final. Finally, the finale. There it is. There it is. Um, that is the hope anyways, because holy crap. This game is way longer than, than everything else online saying it should be. It could be like, it could be because, you know, people playing it solo, you're reading it and it's quicker. But I upped the time in my brain. Like, all right, well, I'm reading it and hanging out in chat. Let's up it a couple hours. And it's still way above what it I, it should be. Anyway. But how you doing, Space? Welcome to the stream. Oh. Cross your fingers. Hopefully some good stuff will come out. Oh, right. Gotta be focused OBS, cause you gotta. Also, I need to... I keep forgetting. Oh, I was gonna check out that plate up demo. Um. I need to, to look in to see if there's a stream deck. Stream deck. Focus. OBS. See if that I can find a way to get around that. It'll still be annoying because then it has to refocus back to what I was doing or where I was at. And that could be also a pain in the ass because I don't know if it would be smart enough to know what was the previous window. I'm doing just fine. Uh, stressful day. Uh, but it is what it is. I don't know. There's going to be some uh, student loan forgiveness, which is great. Um, that will t take out a large portion of my remaining loan if that goes through tomorrow. Um, also, I was talking with my buddy um, about some of the... Uh, I, I don't know, the scam uh, colleges, uh, the bogus colleges, the, the for-profit colleges that... Uh, preyed on students and stuff and lied and all that stuff um a, a buddy told me that yeah there was a forgiveness for that and i was like oh shit i didn't hear about that um so downside of that is or there's an upside and a downside right upside is i the college <laughs> the school that i attended was one of those colleges um so i could potentially get some forgiveness downside is a lot of it's already paid off so i don't know if it will qualify Worst side of it is, it pretty much invalidates my degree. So my degree is literally worth toilet paper now. So that's freaking amazing. So I found that out today. Um, but I'm going to go through a process, see if I can get any sort of forgiveness. Because fucking student loans, man. Hot garbage. Anyways. Let's continue playing this game. Uh, oh, let's do a log because I think I... Okay. Another early morning, if you can call it that. Haven't gone to sleep yet. So it still feels like late night. I'm pushing. Noriko has, Noriko has me on a short leash. Leash. I think she knows it too. Apparently she specified this as the place of Junpei's death. Don't know how she knew of it. This parking complex belongs to Jupain's apartment building. It extends two or three levels underground. Underground? Right? It's... It's super predatory. Student loans. So I had to spend, like, two hours writing up information. It was like, how did this school blah 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 take advantage or lie blah blah blah. I was like, there... You can look up my school... And there's countless articles. Even the Department of Education has denounced them and said, no, no, this school is... Uh, this school's not around anymore. They it got shut down. And it's like, why do I need to provide this information? You have that I went to that school. Literally, I logged in. You're like, oh, no, you went to this school. I'm like, yeah! You should know! <laughs> I don't... I shouldn't have to explain anything. Just say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here's some of that refunded money back because they fucked you over. So shitty. This park... Oh, I read that. Again, Norco specified in the exact location of the death. Why? The Human Removal Service seems to take user requests very seriously. How much further ahead? Oh, right. She specified with the, the request. Shh. Keep your voice down. I'm just looking for a good vantage point that we can hide. 
Her words are severed by a violent gasp. Unable to speak another word, she simply points. Her eyes ob my eyes obediently follow the direction of her slender finger. Oh boy. It's Legion! Oh. Look, it's Legion! It's just like Chax's. They absolutely know. Yeah, they, there's, they just try to fuck you over with that too. Like, you know. You exactly know. Now we want to see if you do something wrong so we can come after you for more money. Why don't you go to the people that actually take advantage of the systems? You know, like Bezos and all the rich people that find all the loopholes so they don't have to pay any taxes. I pay more taxes than Jeff Bezos. Jeffrey Bezos. Disappointing. Missed the main event. They're wearing a skirt. They're wearing a skirt. Wait a minute. Uh, how do I hide? They're wearing a skirt. They must have short hair. If this ends up being an M. Night Shyamalan bullshit turn of events and that ends up being, it ends up being Owie, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Junpei Matsumoto is already dead. He's floating in a sea of his own blood. Vicious stab wounds practically glow red along his back. After examining his remains, I turn my attention to the less interesting figure standing motionless behind him. You. The Masked Ranger looks like the villain from a B-rated slasher film. He's covered from head to toe in dark clothing, a zipped up jacket with extra long sleeves, a hood, and a skirt. The cut of the figure's clothes, the cut of the figure's clothes combined with his physique gives me the impression that he may be in fact female. Is this the herald we've been searching for? The bloody corpse at her feet would suggest that it is so. The mask. That's the corpse girl mask. The mask? It's simple, white, probably porcelain. It's reminiscent of something, some fictional character, or maybe some film villain after all. The Herald still hasn't moved. She's at still, she's as still as a statue, gaze vacant, her eyes impossible to discern behind the mask. Are you the Herald? For the first time, the figure moves. It's a startling, jerky motion, like a mannequin or a puppet being pulled by strings. Ew. Her head cocks to the side, and she seems to notice our presence for the first time. But an answer to Noriko's question is not forthcoming. I step up to the plate. You really immortal? The Herald doesn't react to my voice like she reacted to Noriko's. She has returned to a stiff, doll-like state. Pretty easy to prove if someone or something is immortal, and I've always had a curious mind. I draw the knife from my pocket and launch it at the mannequin. The blade embeds itself into the thing's shoulder, and she doesn't so much as flinch as a trickle of blood pools around the shining steel. What the fuck? Oh, Mr. Hart. Kojiro, why did you do that? I shrug and take a step forward to the step toward the herald before Noriko tugs on my, at my coat and holds me back. She takes my place and puts herself between me and the herald. Tell us who you are. We deserve to know that much. Wait, what special did you just watch? Streamer brain. I forgot what we were talking about. Something in Noriko's words, the sound of her voice, or the tone of her plea causes the Herald to move once more in an acknowledgement. His emotion this time is quick, fast, calculated. Oh, the Bull Burnham special? I only saw it once because my brother forced me to watch it. And the only reason I know that Jeffrey Bezos thing on is, is because everyone freaking singing it. Constantly on social media. The Herald moves a sleeved hand to withdraw the knife from her shoulder. And she, and she allows the blade to drop down to the concrete ground with a dull ting. Before the knife hits the ground, the Herald turns her back to us and breaks into a sprint. Shit. Not cut out to chase her. Don't bother. We won't catch up. The Herald disappears into the darkness of the parking lot. We are left standing by the corpse of Junpei Matsumoto. Well, we didn't see the killing, but at least the request was granted. She's right. Her gambit paid off. The Herald killed her own ally. She has proven her convictions are strong. I crouch down to examine Junpei's corpse, but it's hard to get a good look at a good look in the darkness. Regardless, it's clear that the dog is dead. Should we leave the body? Going to send a text. Huh? Who are you messaging? 
See if I can pull a few strings. Wouldn't mind if the corpse ended up at my morgue. Hmm. What are you planning? Nothing, really. Just want to prod and poke a bit. Yorko's sub subsequent grunt is a clear indication that she doesn't fully believe me. <sighs> Do what you want. I've gained as much from this as I had hoped. I let her trail off as I turn my attention to my phone. I swipe through the contacts and quickly compose a message to a few people in particular. If all goes well, an investigation team will shortly arrive to examine the scene. I'll be gone by then, but if my contacts do their jobs correctly, they'll haul Junpei back to the morgue. I pocket my phone and scurry toward the blood-soaked knife I launched at the Herald. Your contacts now are criminal body snatchers now? It slides back to my pocket and I signal to Norio that we should depart. Bye, Junpei Matsumoto. She waves half-heartedly at the corpse and lets out a childlike giggle. A scant few hours sleep didn't offer much in the way of refreshment. I have to be at the morgue again in an hour. Not that there's much to do there since the place was robbed. Perhaps a few more cadavers will have arrived. Perhaps Junpei Matsumoto's corpse will be there. I should take this opportunity to take a breath. It's been a while since life slowed down like this. No request coming through for Corpse Girl. No bodies to haul around town with Tomoe. No cada cadavers to catalog at the morgue. Life should be good. I'm still alone. And Norco may decide to discard me at any moment. Why does that make me want her more? Hmm. Do I want to prove my worth? My value? Prove to her that I'm worth keeping around? Don't know. Doesn't matter in the long run. After brewing myself a cup of coffee using the French press Tomoe gifted me, I take a seat in my chair. Sitting alone in the darkness is somewhat depressing, but it's only temporary. I won't be alone forever. Soon, Noriko will sit here with me. No. No, your deal was that you had to kill Junpei, and she'd be with you. Oh, man. We'll be together. Together in the darkness. Nope. I'll make her see my worth. I'll make her love me the way I, that I love her. I'll make her fill the void of Shizuko left in my life. Shizuko left in my life. I'll make her treat the gnawing pain in my insides. I'll make her save me from falling into despair, from falling into old habits. That's not a partner's job. That's not their job. It's a partnership. They're, they're, they're... They're there to help and assist with those problems. But it's on you as a person to fix those problems. Right? Norco will save me for myself, just like Shizuko once said. See? No, 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 no. You save yourself. I take a sip of my coffee. It's still a little hot, and it scalds the gap in my mouth where my tooth once was. Wasn't that... <laughs> the exact same phrase that was from me last stream. It hurts, but I'll be okay. Soon. It's hard to hide a smile when plans unfold perfectly. The body was here waiting for me when I arrived at the morgue. Staring down at the pallid corpse of Junpei Matsumoto fills me with more satisfaction than I thought possible. The dog is dead, and my early morning encounter with his executioner wasn't just some fever dream born from wishful thinking. His body is riddled with stab wounds, deep, clean, piercing cuts. But these injuries were not inflicted by a knife. I'm no forensic pathologist, but the wounds are too thin and too deep. Each intrusion is about the width of a chopstick. I doubt he was killed by chopsticks, though. I can never rule out everything. My gaze pans down his body, looking for anything of interest. The rest of his form looks ordinary. Nothing to note. I'll zip up the bag for now and return him to his allocated cold chamber. Watch someone was using a nail gun on him. I take him out once in a while to have a laugh. As I raise the zipper covering his legs and groin, I have to shift his arm to fit them within the HRP. And then I flinch and my hands inst instinctively retract from the cadaver. I'm used to the ice cold touch of the body, fresh from its containment chamber. The sensation of lifeless, preserved flesh. Thus, it wasn't the sensation of touch that caused me to startle. It was the sight of something out of the ordinary. 
Something I'd somehow missed during my initial observation. Doomface fingers. They're not injured from when he stabbed him. Watch. Five thick, meaty digits on each hand. Ten perfectly intact, dead but otherwise healthy fingers. Fucking webcam thing. It was only days ago that I pierced two of his fingers. His thumb and his pointer finger using cheap metal cutlery. I can't forget the distinct feeling of plunging those implements implements through flesh and bone, pinning his fingers to the table. The corpse before me shows no evidence of ever being injured in such a manner. Nobody can heal wounds like that without medical attention. Even then, stitches and scars will remain. But Junpei Matsumoto's digits are 100% intact and puncture-free. Interesting. Come to think of it, didn't I snap another few of his fingers in half that time I confronted him outside his apartment? I'm sure I did. Crush the bones within my own fist. But this corpse's hands don't show any signs of that either. Normal to the touch, no visible bruising. Check the ribs. On way, I pull out my phone and open noise. I navigate to Junpei Matsumoto's profile. Load a few profile images, swipe through them one by one. I put my phone right next to Junpei's head, comparing the similarities between, Jun between Junpei's photos and his dead body. Everything becomes clear immediately. Certain elements of Junpei's features don't match. His nose is broader in photos, his lips are thinner, more taut. I mean, you lose tautness when you're a corpse. The corpse in front of me is not Junpei Matsumoto. It's a copy. A clone. Junpei, Mat Junpei Matsumoto's death was faked for our, our entertainment. The body lying on the ground in front, of, in front of the Herald was planted there before we arrived. Planted to convince us that Junpei had met his maker. The Herald did not kill Junpei. The Herald simply used one of his corpse one of Corpse Girl's tricks and produced a carbon copy body. All in order to put myself in Noriko. As this revelation settles in my mind, I come to another conclusion. The morgue being robbed was no coincidence. I can almost guarantee you that the cadaver used to replicate Junpei's death had, was stolen from this very place. The weapon of deception stolen and turned against us. And the morgue was targeted before Noriko even requested Junpei's death. Almost as if the Human Removal Service predicted Noriko's movements in advance. Is that even possible? All I know for sure is that the dog is still out there, still skulking around, working for his master. This is starting to get interesting. Is it? Is it really? Okay, I think I'm up to date. I guess it was a good thing you decided to prod and poke Junpei's corpse, as you put it. Guess so. I thought you were just being your usual morbid self. Taking corpses for your own use, whatever that may be. Don't know what to tell you. Well, I'm glad you acted. Faking Junpei's death. What's their end goal? What did they really accomplish by pulling such a stunt? There's a million possible answers to that question. Ooh, excuse me. Can't know the real truth. Not yet. Obvious answer would be that they wanted to deceive us. Make us think we have the upper hand. I came to the same conclusion. They think they fooled us, but we know better. Can we use that to our advantage? I don't know how someone took a stab wound to the freaking shoulder and didn't flinch. Sometimes you're helpful and other times you're just... What? Never mind. Okay. It irritates her when I withhold my thoughts. Sometimes I act like this just to elicit a relaxion, reaction from her. My god, what a fucking childlike behavior. She's cute when she's pissed I off. I don't know what we should do next. We're kind of at a dead end, right? Kind of. Corpse Girl's website has gone silent. No one is requesting deaths anymore. But if I'm to believe the news, there are still dozens of people being killed all around the city. Which means the human removal service is still as active as ever. Don't beat yourself up. Don't have any cadavers at the morgue anyway. Can't exactly fulfill any requests. True. She sighs and rubs her eyes. Despite her tired, exhausted appearance, she's dealing with recent events rather well. Or Noriko, at any rate. Can you let me know when the morgue starts filling up again? Sure. Hang on. There is one body there. 
<laughs> Junpei's. Fake Junpei. <laughs> Fake Junpei. <laughs> yeah. Not much use, though, I suppose. No, not really. Keep me updated. Okay. She rubs her eyes again and tries to hold back Yon. Oh, no, fuck. Right. I hate... Just reading that word makes me on. You look wrecked. Sorry. Oh, you already said that. Things are tough right now. It'll get better. You'll cause some death soon enough. My words have the strange effect of actually cheering her up slightly. I know we're not exactly the most normal people. The things we do, the causes we devote ourselves to, they are wrong. There's no other way to put it. I know this. I trust that Noriko knows this as well. We're morbid, sick, disgusting. Norco slaughters innocent people in the name of Corpse Girl, a fabricated idol, or alter ego, or whatever else she could be. As for me, I've got as much blood on my hands as Noriko does. She likes to believe she's innocent, but the truth is that she's just as guilty as any killer. I don't see myself the same way. I know for a fact that things I've done are enough to put me behind bars for the rest of my life. I don't try to convince myself that I'm something I'm not. I'm a criminal, plain and simple. But... Noriko is a kindred spirit. We're connected at on some level that I don't expect the average person to understand. We're bonded by th the things we've done. The deaths, the death we've witnessed. Looking at her now, this child girl, worn thin by stress. I can't help but be reminded of Shizuko. I messed up with Shizuko. I didn't take the time we had together seriously. I take it all for granted. I won't make the same mistake with, with Noriko. I'll make her mine and I'll prove my love to her every day. Perhaps that will convince her not to discard me when I've run out of use. Want something to eat? She glanced at me and opens her mouth, but weighs her words before speaking. Thanks, but you know me. I know. Of course I know. I know so much about her. She doesn't eat. Not unless she absolutely has to in order to live for another day. Something light? A salad? <laughs> I want to share a meal with you. I can't. Okay. I understand. I do. I get it. It's Noriko. Her convi convictions are what I admire most about her. What? What would it, it say of her character if I could break her convictions with a simple invitation? Maybe she's, uh, maybe she has an eating disorder. Did you guys see that flashing thing? What the fuck was that? That was weird. Is it that? Bullshit. should get married. What the fuck? Huh? A few days ago, you said you'd be mine. You didn't kill Junpei. Um, I told you something Cookie like that. Yeah. What's up, Pancake? You're Welcome to the stream. Jay, I'm cooking for you. Boop. But that had a condition. You had to kill Junpei. Hold it. Mm. She's right. I didn't manage to kill him. Does that mean I don't deserve her? Maybe there's something else I could do? Uh, holy crap! I'm so sorry. Let me prove that I'm a man you can love. I'll think about it. We don't know if she's interested in men, dude. Okay. I'll take that. It's better than outright no. Maybe you should get going for now. I need to sleep. What happened today at school, Pancake? You, there's no kids at your school right now, right? So I'd hope nothing ridiculous happened. I'll leave her be. Should get some sleep myself. Bye. Told you. Ooh, I, I'm so, so very sorry. Something about the way she says my name sends a chill down my spine. It's not a pleasant sensation. It's not a feeling of elation or excitement. It's uncomfortable, disconcerting. I shrug it off and leave the factory. School already started, I guess. Yeah, it is the end of August, huh? Holy crap. What the fuck? I have an uncannily vivid recollection of dragging Shizuko's corpse through the streets of the on the night she was killed. Oh my god. I had witnessed the collision. I watched, speechless, as the asshole who reined her down drove away like a coward. It took me a while to gather the strength to collect her crumpled body from the asphalt. By then, it was around 7 o'clock. 
The sun had set, it, had set, but a sliver of light still peeked over the horizon, tinting the sky with an orange hue. People kept screaming at me. I wasn't doing anything wrong. I wasn't trying to smear Shuko's blood on the sidewalk. I just wanted to take her home. She was hurt or dead. No point in leaving her in the middle of the road. She didn't comment on my suit. I got all dressed up just for her. She didn't comment on the ring, even as I slipped it on her stiff finger. She didn't say a word about the size of the diamond. She... This guy... But she made a unique sound as we walked. It rings in my ears now and then, especially when I catch myself in quiet moments. I didn't know what it was at the time. It punctured the silence between he my heavy footsteps. Turns out, the sound was caused by the fabric of her dress stretching and ripping against the coarse texture of the sidewalk. She made that sound for the entire journey home. My footsteps thud. Thud. Shizuku shook, shirk, shirk. People screaming, ah, kya! The cacophony of irritating noise assaulted us during the entire expedition. Silence didn't rear its head until we arrived at our destination. He definitely put her in the walls. A kid showed up with a kitchen knife in her lunchbox? To cut up a nectarine? And they thought nothing was wrong with that? <laughs> oh my god! I guess it depends on how young that kid was because I could see that just being naivete, but a big ass kitchen knife to cut up a nectarine. It wasn't easy getting her up the stairs to my apartment. I carried her in my arms dozens of times, always effortlessly. But during the final ascent, Shizuko's weight exceeded my, the limit of my muscles. I had no choice but to drag her up slowly, a single step at a time. It wasn't my fault her head cracked against every step. What the fuck, dude? Once we were inside, I finally had the opportunity to, to examine the damage. Yeah, you probably inflicted a ton more. Her limbs were flattened. Her chest had caved in. Ribs crushed and ground into a fine dust. Remarkably, her beautiful face remained unmarred. She looked at peace despite having died in pure agony not long before. And that was the last time I kissed her. Oh, God! I planted my lips on hers and found comfort in the slight warmth that still remained. And then I closed her eyes. Oh my god, her eyes were open that whole time. My memory of that event is so clear that thinking about it feels like I'm reliving it again for the first time. The pain hasn't dulled, but I'm glad I don't live in that apartment anymore. Climbing those steps every day would only serve to remind me of dragging Shizuko behind me. How was he not stopped by police? by people calling them. I cut myself free from the change that shackled me to her, but I can never destroy her the memories. I think they'll haunt me to the end of my days. Perhaps that's why I'm so desperate to fill the void she left in my life. I'm desperate to distract myself from the love with the love from another. And yet, at that time, I didn't want to let her go. I wanted to hold her cold, lifeless corpse to my body and simply waste away so I could join her in the afterlife. Ugh. It got past the metal detectors. Oh, so it's ceramic. Had the sheath and everything. My fucking God. <sighs> wow. School needs to up their uh, security measures. Kids walk it in with freaking ceramic knives. In fact, I was so attached to her corpse that I did something I'd never done before. Not once in all my history of toying with dead bodies. We were right, chat. I decided to keep her. Don't know whether it was out of desperate, out of despair or depression or desperation. Don't really know why I decided to do such an odd thing. Possessed by a single disturbing idea, I emptied out the small storage cabinet in that old apartment, discarded everything within, and then I carefully, delicately, lovingly placed Shizuko inside the dark space. She stood up against the wall almost casually, almost like she was alive. I held her in place with some rope fastened to the wall, a loop around her neck and a few bindings around her waist. 
So that's what he stores his fucking... Uh, his, his No, no, because that's his new apartment. I think his new apartment has a body in it, too. She sagged a little, but it was all, wasn't overly noticeable. There, Shizuku stood before me. Though her gaze was lowered, I could almost fool myself into thinking she wanted to greet me. Or she wanted to simply say goodbye. Goodbye. Something I never considered saying to her. But I knew it was time. Time to say goodbye to her and to say goodbye to myself. The me that shared a life with her. The me that lived in the shame of the things I'd done. Into that small storage room I piled the evidence of my guilt. All the macabre and sickening paraphernalia I'd collected over the years found a new home within that dark space. Like, what? Oh, I, I don't want to know what you put in there, but I also want to know. Photos of corpses, tomes written about embalming and mummification, countless books by Nobel Sinclair, and that author I had so dearly, I held so dearly to my heart. Everything, and everyone that made up Kujiro found itself inside that room. And with one last look at the girl, I slammed the door and locked it tight. The ceremonial act of locking away everything I once loved had a cathartic effect. But the moments after that aren't as clear in my mind. I know that I sealed up the room and concealed the door, but I don't recall the effort that went into doing so. Called it! We knew that's where this gross smell was coming from. I know that I decided to leave the apartment behind, but I don't recall talking to the landlord. I know that I tried to move on from being the person I once was, but I don't know how much I truly changed. Because just over a year later, I'm still in this world, taking part in truly disturbing acts. I'm still obsessed with the dead, and I'm still fawning over Shizu Noriko. Maybe people can't change after all. Maybe I've been fooling myself all this time into thinking that I'm different now, but I'm not. I'm the same as I always was. I'm still just Kojiro. Maybe that's okay. Therapy, dude. Cadavers were in the morgue when I arrived tonight. Ah. Also, I was thinking. What about? Something funny. We went to such lengths to make sure we didn't get caught stealing cadavers from here. And? Well, it's amusing that the entire place was ransacked mm -hmm. by the human removal service, but no one ever investigated. Yep. That's what I said. No one here seemed to really care. Fucking. Webcam utility. It's so hard to cover our tracks. Being careful about every single corpse we lifted. Then those assholes just waltzed in and stole everything without any repercussions. Yeah. It makes me sick. I want to bring them down. Yeah. Anyway, how many bodies came in today? Four. Not a great deal, but a start. Give it a week or two, and this place should be packed once more. Okay, good. Thanks for letting me know. Of course. See you. Later. Since I've already cataloged the new arrivals, I figured I can relax for the rest of my shift. I plant myself on the uncomfortable steel chair parked near the morgue's entryway. A few minutes, moments later, I'm lost within the flashing lights from my phone screen. Don't know how long I zoned out for, but when I come to, Norco's name is emblazoned. Is that how you say that word? Emblazoned? Or emblazoned across my screen. Strange for her to call me now since we spoke just before. Yo. You're not going to believe this. Try me. Somebody requested a death. That's the first time she's ever reached out and told someone that, huh? Ah, that explains the excitement in her voice. Congrats. It's been a while. It's been far too long. I thought we were done for. I thought Corpse Girl's website had fallen into obscurity. Happy for you. Kojiro, we can't let this slip through our fingers. We need a victory here. This new Let's get that W! Immediately. I want this victim to die with a bang. Don't bang him. Don't, don't. That's not what we're talking about, Kojiro. I want his death to propel Corpse Girl's name back. Fucking. Roger. All right, I have to restart my the webcam app because it's freaking out, apparently. Stop it. 
You're obnoxious. Awaiting your orders. I'm sending you the Vix photo. Get me a corpse that matches his appearance, just like you. I didn't actually restart it. I closed a part of it. Hopefully, it will help. Only got a handful of bodies here. Remember, it's going to be a long shot. Do whatever the fuck you have to do. Her icy cold command leaves no room to be misinterpreted. Copy that. The call ends, and I immediately receive a message from Noriko. Opening up reveals the photo of Corpse Girl's latest victim. Male, mid thirties or so. Fairly unremarkable guy. Let's see what bodies are in stock. I heave myself off the steel chair and log into the morgue's computer. Scanning through the inventory only takes a few seconds. There are five cadavers here in total. The four that arrived today, plus Junpei Matsumoto look like. Looking through the details reveals that of the five, three are female and two are male. I immediately rule out using the Junpei look like corpse for this request. It's a heavy set body and doesn't match the victim at all. I'll need to take a look at the other male, but I don't like the odds of finding a match. I navigate to the cold chamber and open up the cache housing the corpse in question. The cold air spewing forth from the open compartment fogs up my glasses. I calmly remove them, wipe them against my coat, and return them to the rightful place. After unzipping the body bag, I met the, with the face of death. A sight I have become more than accustomed to after many long years working here. This guy is just an average looking just as average looking as Corpse Girl's victim. Seems like the type of person you wouldn't notice in a crowd. He'd simply be a blur against a sea of bodies. Is uh, the human removal service fucking with us now and sending requests of people they've already killed? Might be exactly what we need. I compare his features to those of the victim in the photo. He looks similar. Couldn't exactly mistake him for a relative, but maybe with a bit of Norco's makeup and handiwork, he might pass off as a close enough copy. Only one problem. Unzipping the body bag further reveals that this guy has only one arm. His left arm has been severed just below the elbow, leaving a surgical stump. It's something that he has cleverly that he has clearly lived with for years because the area in question is clean. Probably had his prosthetic limb before being moved to the morgue. This particular feature is a deal breaker. Too hard to convince the victim that it's his own corpse if it's missing a limb. Or you factor that into the death. Although, perhaps Noriko could factor the- Holy shit, I just said that! I even said factor! Perhaps Noriko could factor the missing limb into the cause of death- My- Look at my big brain 200 IQ! If I bloodied- If I bloodied the stump a bit, it could make me look like he lost an arm before he died. Yep. I got that big brain juice. I reach for my phone and call Noriko back, getting sick of the chit-chat. You find a suitable corpse? Almost. Got a guy about the same age and build. Plain face. Needs some work, but could do the job. Great! I'll send Tomoe over with the van right away. Just one thing. What? The body is missing an arm. Oh. That is a problem. Yeah. Can you edit the corpse photo so that the victim is missing an arm? Make it look like it got chopped off before he died. That way, when he receives the actual corpse, he'll be expecting a missing limb. No. No? I'm already in the middle of making the photo. I'm not changing it now. Okay. Then I don't know what to tell you. Don't have any other suitable bodies. Make it work, Kojiro. Jeez. That venomous tone again. What can I do? I'm not going to roam the street and kill someone that looks like the Vic. Come up with something else, then. Hell, chop your own arm off and attach it to the corpse. I don't care what you do. Yeah, she's she's long gone. But I need the body within the hour. If you let me down, I'll never be with you. Our relationship is tied to Corpse Girl's fate. If you let her down, you'll let me down. And I don't like being let down. Her whole persona and personality has changed. The whole the or the phone beeps twice as if in as if to protest, Noriko abruptly ending the call. Fantastic. She likes backing me into corners. What am I supposed to do? It's clear that she doesn't really have any intention of being with me. She's using me, dangling the promise of something and desire right in front of me. And yet, I need to have her. I need to prove to her that she should be with me. I lower my glasses and gently rub my brow with my fingers. Shit. 
I've got an idea. I can't believe I'm about to do this. I slide my glasses back up and adjust them so they're comfortable once more. I thought I fetched. Oh, he's gonna cut off someone else's arm in the morgue. I fetched the mobile mortuary lift and angle it underneath the tray protruding from the open cold chamber. Wow, that was a lot of word that I stumbled across. With a great deal of effort, I detached the tray from the chamber. It rests upon the top of the mortuary lift, allowing me to wheel the corpse across the morgue. After pushing it halfway across the open room, I let the wheels come to the stop directly underneath one of the ceiling's flaring fluorescent lights. With that done, I turn and rummage around in a cabinet. I sort through a number of tools and I'm able to find what I'm looking for. Clutching the sterile implement in a shaking hand, I return the corpse lying atop the steel tray. I roll up the sleeves of my coat. Honorico. Here goes. You. Whoa, wait, what, wait, wait, wait. Yo, dude. You had four corpses in there. There was literally four dead bodies arms that you could have just stole. Okay. Buckle up, chat. We're in for another ride. When the metal bone saw digs into the soft flesh of my arm, I have to grip my teeth to refrain from screaming. I angle the blade so it cuts away from my elbow. Need to leave that intact. The cutting process is pure agony. To prevent myself from passing out, I keep my breathing steady and try to focus on something simple. Something my brain can handle with a while aflame with pain. I begin to count. One. Two. Three. I count the seconds that it takes for the jagged metal saw to reach bone. Fifteen. Sixteen. Still just flesh and muscle and blood spurting down my coat. Fuck. Twenty. Twenty-one. I think I reached Sinew after 24 seconds, but it's hard to tell because there's a terrible numbness that is somehow worse than the original searing agony. My fingers clutch the saw. My fingers clutching the saw begin to slip due to perspiration. It's getting harder to even hold the tool. He's gonna have to stand on it and break it off or something, isn't he? After some 32 odd seconds, the saw hits bone. Saw, why with the cracking? I slide, it, I slide it back and forth, cutting into dense matter with as much strength as my failing body can muster. Vomit and drool have soaked the front of my coat and began to smear together with, the bro with blood. It's forming a shallow pool at my feet and the stench of the mixing liquid threatens to overwhelm my senses. Counting the seconds has become infinitely more difficult. 43. 44. 4. 30. Was it 21 seconds so far? No, it's been longer than that. It has to have been a minute by now. By now? I've been sawing into my own arm for a full minute. But the blade still hasn't cut through all of the bone. Don't recall when I fell to my knees. Don't recall when I stood back up. Don't recall running my slimy fingers through my hair. Or when flecks of blood splattered against my glasses. Or when my bladder relieved itself. Don't even recall why I'm doing this. Is it for Shizuko? Is it because I love her? No. Noriko. It's for Noriko. Actually, it's for Corpse Girl. I have to prove I'm worthy of her. I have to be loved by her. There's nothing else for me. 97. 98. As my count reaches 99 seconds, my right arm falls to the wet, tiled floor, flopping like a dead fish against the deck of a boat. I let out a groan of what can only be called relief, and I slump in on myself, resting in the pool of foul liquid. My vision, my vision is blurry. My breathing is ragged. The same part of my consciousness knows that I need to treat my wound. I need to apply a tourniquet or cauterize the damage, or I'm just going to bleed out and die on the floor of my own morgue. But a quiet voice in my mind, the very same one that drove me to such an extreme measure, urges me to finish my work. Getting to my feet is a struggle. I try to push myself up off the ground using both arms, but of course, I fall flat on my face and my right arm fails to react to my mental instructions. I think the lenses in my glasses smashed against the tiles because my eyes seem to be bleeding now. Fucking A. The second attempt at pushing off the ground is more successful. My left arm is somewhere strong enough to hoist my barely responsive body. I sway and stagger around aimlessly before collecting myself 
enough to attempt to fish my severed arm off the ground. Luckily, I managed to grasp the blood and vomit soaked wrist of my former limb with my one good hand. I drag myself toward the mortuary lift that holds aloft the corpse I need to attach my arm to. But I didn't think this through. I don't really know how to attach a severed limb. I bludgeon the corpse's stump with my useless fuck with my useless arm, trying to find some point of connection that will ma magically fuse the limb to the corpse. It's hopeless. And I'm mad and as I madly flail the arm around, I can't help but laugh at the whole situation. Of course I can't attach my arm to this corpse. The corpse is missing its left arm. He cut off the wrong arm. Space called it. Hope it's the right arm. It was the right arm, but it was the wrong arm. I cut off my right arm. <laughs> All right. All your marbles are lost. Good one. I throw my useless detached arm behind me and rest my weary body against the mortuary lift. Accompanying my laughter is the laughter of somebody else nearby. I have to listen really intently to confirm that it's not just hallucinating. But I'm certain that someone just walked into my line of vision, even if there's nothing more than a dark blurred silhouette. Oh, bro, you don't look so hot. It's Junpei. What did you do? Cut off your own arm? I know the voice, but I can't place it right now. It's not my voice, and it's not Noriko's voice. To take the pain away? Yes, please. I'd give anything to remove the pain. I can't voice my consent. My mouth is dry, and my jaw locked in place. Here. Nothing a little fire can't. Is he actually going to burn me to death or is he going to cauterize it? The figure comes closer. He smells foul, like a dog that has been bathed in gasoline. Oh, shit. A dog. The heavy set figure that I now assume is Junpei Matsumoto is crouched over me. The smell of gasoline intensifies as he pours some sort of cold liquid all over my clothes. Oh, shit. Pity I gotta light this place up. But you guys didn't get the hint when we stole all of your corpses. Well, you ain't gonna be nothing without your precious more. Oh boy. And Corpse Girl is gonna wither away without her right hand man. <laughs> right hand. Get it, Gojimbo? Gojimbo. The way he deliberately mispronounces my name really bothers me. It bothers me so much that the anger boiling inside me gives me the strength to open my mouth, my mouth once more. It's Kojiro. Sure, bro. Sleep tight. The dog lifts his body and disappears into oblivion beyond my sight. The unmis unmistakable sound of a match being struck should fill me with panic, but I feel strangely calm. Warm, glowing tendrils of flame flicker around the outskirts. All right, fuck you, web webcam utility. Fine, I'll kill you. I'll kill you dead, and we'll start you over. You happy? You happy now? I have to turn off the cam. Please hold. So annoying. Behave! Warm glowing. Uh. Yeah, Go away, Windows thing. I have, uh, more oh boy, Birch, you came into a thing. How you doing, friend? Welcome to the stream. Warm glowing tendrils of flame flicker around the outskirts of my vision. Fire. The entire morgue is alight. The acrid smile of smoke quickly covers up the odor of gasoline. Fire. I lost my family to fire so many years ago. Maybe it's fitting that I should perish in the same way. Fire. I hate fire. I hate it and fear it. Fire. It's everywhere, surrounding me. The sickening sense of burning flesh permeates my nostrils and I realize it's the smell of my severed arm being incinerated behind me. Yeah, it's super gore fest right now. Fire. I close my eyes. Really sleepy right now. Lost a lot of blood after all. Sorry. Sorry I mocked you. 
Did he just go up in smoke? <laughs> Achievement. Hey, Act 2 is clear. We did it. <gasps> it's Owie. We get to play as Owie? Oh, happy days. Wait, one month later from Kojiro? Taking a fire nap? Oh, I'm so mad. I really wish I could scream at him. I really, really, really want to scream. But he's one of my best customers. I just wish he would take the rules seriously. He said... I said no free refills. Oh, I love her! The squeak of my voice surprises even me. Gosh, I've never yelled at a customer before. It feels so liberating. Liberating. I feel free. The customer hangs his head. He looks as guilty as I feel on the inside. Oh gosh, I shouldn't have raised my voice at him. Stupid, stupid, stupid. I'm going to get fired for this. I just know it. Sorry, Miss Owie. I'll never ask again. I promise. About... I, what's GTK? I'm, I'm old. I don't know uh, acronyms. Good to know. Gotcha. Is that what it is? Yeah, uh, Kajiro cut off his arm. Uh, because Noriko kind of asked him to. That's it. Don't let me see you back down. Don't let him see you back down. Be firm, girl. Stand up for yourself. Fuck yeah, Owie. The customer scurries away and I nearly faint from the adrenaline pounding through me. What a rush. I can't believe I didn't back down. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. When I feel like I've calmed down, I fetch a cloth and begin to wipe down some tables. This place hasn't been too busy lately. I still shake when I think about the incident last month that drove away a lot of our customers. That was when Kojiro came in and stabbed people. That man... That tall, scary man of glasses and an evil face. Yep. He hurt my sweet little Junpei. He cornered him in his very cafe and stabbed his fingers with cutlery. What kind of sick freak does such a thing? I know there's something between those two. I can't ever forget the time that man left Junpei all bruised and broken on the ground outside his apartment. Urgh. I hate that man. Who does he think he is? Bullying my sweetheart. A pleasant little chime rings out from my pocket and I recognize it as a notification I set to let me know when the cafe is closing. Lucky, luckily for me, I'm not on closing duty tonight. My co-workers will take care of all of that. All I need to do is sign out of the employee's app on my phone, and my full shift will be automatically recorded. Then I'll get paid on time, just like usual. Bye, everyone! I wave farewell to the, or farewell to the other girls and duck out the front door. But how you doing, Birch? Hanging in there? As usual, my cute little honeybee is waiting... Awaiting me outside. Sup, baby doll? Did you just murder? No, this was a this is a month later. Junpei. I rush into his arms and give him a big snuggly cuddle. I'm so happy to see you. Of course, babe. I'm always here for you. If you hurt her, there's nothing I can do because you're a video game character. But fuck off. How was your shift? Not so bad. Glad to hear it. Guess things really have changed around here. Yep. It's so much better since the old manager left. Good, good. You come tell Junpei if anyone else gives you trouble, yeah? I will. I nuzzle into his broad chest once more and immediately feel safe and warm. Can I come back to your place? Yes. He holds my hand and leads me towards the train station. I'm so excited to be with him again. Hey, new, Would you like new background. To see my dear? Oh, look it! Whoa, now, she looks adorable in a different outfit. Serving drinks to people all day. You go kick your feet up, and I'll do the brewing. Junpei is so thoughtful. Every word he says makes it clear how much he cares for me. Thank you. I need his instruction and nestle... I heed his instruction and nestle myself comfortably into the sofa. As I wait for him to finish up in the kitchen, I scroll through my noise feed. I don't have that many friends on here, mainly just family members. I still like to see what everybody's up to lately. Plus, Junpei always shares funny memes and pics on his profile. So I love seeing those. <sighs> After scrolling for a minute I, minute, I come across a status update from a friend I haven't heard from in a while. Noriko Kurosawa. Day 3? What the hell is that? What does that mean? 
Her entire post is short and meaningless. It just says, K3. No idea what that could be. What on earth could she mean by that? Hmm. When was the last time I talked to Noriko anyway? She used to call me all the time. I used to call her too. But somewhere along the line, we fell out of touch. It's only been two months. After I introduced her to Junpei, I kind of got the feeling she was jealous. Jealous. Noriko always had feelings for me. Maybe being introduced to my boyfriend really hurt her. Oh, now I feel terrible. Your tea, my love. Junpei sat down two teacups on a small coffee table in front of the sofa. Steam rises slowly from both cups. The sight and scent immediately relaxes me. Thank you, pumpkin. Junpei scoots on the sofa right next to me and he leans his head on my shoulder. I raise a hand and run it through my hair as I continue scrolling through noise with my other hand. A post from a guy I went to school with, Shinya Fujikawa, grabs my attention. One step closer to solving the mystery of the deaths around Tokyo. Helping my father collect evidence from the crime scenes. Whoa. It's like a dream come true. Thank you, father. Interesting. Yeah, she just said that. I think she... <laughs> Interesting. I think Shinya always wanted to be a detective. Come to think of it, you were supposed to go... You were supposed to work together at Temujin. Shinya lined up the job for me and uh, Who's this dude? Junpei's gaze is fixed on Shinya's profile picture. Oh, Shinya? I tap on his pick and load his full profile. We went to school together. I scan through his profile and read some more of his recent posts. My father has enlisted me to help with his top secret investigation. Can't divulge any further information. Guys, I'm working on a top secret project. It's top secret, but I can't tell you about it, but it's top secret. That's a horrible, horrible thing to do. My lips are sealed. Top secret. Wow. <laughs> so happy that I managed to get a lead on this case. I submitted some information to the detective in charge of the serial murders around Tokyo. And he said I can join the investigation team as a probationary member. That's exciting for him. A real father complex, doesn't he? Maybe. No one tells you what to expect when you experience heartbreak. Oh. No one tells you how hollow and empty you will feel. It's important to throw yourself into your work. I will do so. Heartbreak. Oh, he broke up with Tomoe? Son or they broke up? This dude tells me he's never had a girlfriend in his life. Huh. I wonder if... Farewell, my love. I'm sorry you couldn't be the man you wanted me to be. To Tomo and Iwantanabe, my soulmate, my other half, I won in everything. Please forgive me. Jeez. Have some dignity, dude. Forgive me. Wow. He really yeah, he did. likes to share everything, doesn't he? I swear, he never used to be this dramatic. Junpei yawns and put his arm around me. Classic move. He's so sweet and romantic. I put my phone down and snuggle into his body. He's like a big soft teddy bear. I should get going once I finish this cup of tea. To go? Yeah, sorry, babe. I gotta check in on mom tonight. Oh, okay. You'll be okay, right? Mm. The thought of being alone forms a pit in my stomach. Don't worry. I'll help you out before I leave. Thank you. Junpei takes one last sip of his tea and gets to his feet. I'll check the usual stuff. Yes, please. He walks behind the sofa and ruffles my hair with his rough hand. The bandages wrapped around his fingers feel coarse against my scalp. As he wanders around my small apartment, he calls out to me. Oven and stovetop are both switched off. Listen to him. Helping her out. Tap is off. No drips. He moves into the bathroom and his voice echoes against the tiled wall. Tap is off in here too. And the shower is off. Finally, he moves to the front door. I'll lock this door properly when I walk out. You just have to put the deadbolt in place, okay? Okay. Thank you. Anytime, sugar. Listen to this guy. He's an asshole, but he's helping her. God damn it. Don't make me feel be conflicted feelings for this piece of shit. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Okay. Love. With that, Junpei walks out the door and closes it behind him. I quickly dash to my sofa to the door and slide the deadbolt into place. All done. The door is locked. The door is locked. The door is locked. I take a deep breath and tiptoe back to the sofa, then collapse onto it. Junpei is so good to me. 
He truly helps me out. Why is it creepy music? I don't like that. When I'm alone, I find it hard to be sure that everything is in order. I can't sleep or leave the apartment if there's a possibility that I left the tap running or an appliance switched on. I can't relax if I think the door might be unlocked. I have to check things again and again and again until there's no shadow of doubt that things are... Until there's no shadow of a doubt that things are the way they should be. I don't remember when this obsessive compulsive behaviors first started, but I've been battling it for as long as I can recall. At the very least, when Jube is here, he checks everything for me. He's so good to me. It saves me so much time. It stops me from having to stand in front of the kitchen sink for five minutes, constantly checking and double checking if the tap is running. Logically, I know it's easy to see if the water's flowing from the faucet. You can see it, you can hear it, and you can feel it if you slip your hand underneath the flow. But logic rarely applies when I find myself second guessing my own senses. I can glance at the faucet and tell myself that it's been turned off properly. It's not dripping. But when I turn away, what if I'm wrong? What if it's actually still running? I feel like my mind is betraying me. I feel like I can't trust anything I see or hear. When in doubt, it should be a simple matter of just quickly check one more time. But the more I check, the less certain I become. And it's not just the faucet I have trouble dealing with. It's nearly everything. I unplug appliances from power sockets to make sure they're definitely still not running. I flick light switches off and on 20 times in a row to ensure I haven't left a bulb on when I leave a room. When I leave a room. I open and close doors repetitively, and locks are the worst. I have to examine them from every possible angle to convince myself that no one can possibly break in. My condition is completely and utterly fucked up. Struggling against it has caused another horrible affliction to evolve inside of me. Anxiety, depression, self-hatred. I just feel like I can't do anything without the shadow of my compulsive- Fuck you, webcam! Why? I restarted you! I just feel like I can't do anything without the shadow of my compulsive behaviors looming over me and controlling me. And so tonight, like many other nights, I decide to sleep right where I am, here on the sofa. Getting up and going to the bathroom is too much effort. Sleeping where I am is just too much, is much, much easier. I begin to drift off, my face planted against the sofa cushion, my legs draped over the armrest. Yeah, I didn't like the music. Why was it creepy? Yeah, why you gotta have a nice boyfriend persona when he's a fucking creepy dude? Or evil dude, rather. I don't know if he's creepy, but he's evil. I'm thankful I don't have to work at the maid cafe today. My neck is a little sore from a terrible night's sleep, but I won't let that get me down. It's Monday, the start to, of a fresh brand new week. I've got lots of exciting things to look forward to. For starters, I'm expecting the delivery of some items I ordered online over the weekend. It's mostly snack food, but still, I can't wait. Hell yeah, I do snack food. Secondly, I'll get up to see I get I'll get to see my Junpei again at this afternoon. I'm going to meet him when he finishes work. Third, my favorite anime airs on Monday nights. There's a new episode every week. Well, except for when they run repeats after a season has just finished. Junpei loves anime as much as I do. Granted, he's not into my favorite series. He says it's a little too girly, but he's but he likes a lot of other shows. We have so much in no, so much fun discussing characters and stories we like, even if the shows he watches scare me a little bit. Yes, it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good week. My, up my upbeat mood is instantly shattered when Noriko Kurosawa's name lights up on my phone. My good mood is shattered. He's calling me? We haven't spoken in so long. Why? What does she want from me? Noriko, she's such a chore. Uh-oh. She whines and complains so much about her life, but she doesn't know how good she has it. So what if she's scared of leaving her apartment? I was right! Agoraphobia, I was right. Agoraphobia isn't that bad. I'm scared of everything. Everything! She's so selfish, thinking she's the only one who has it tough. But she's not. She's always felt for you. I'm so tired of tiptoeing around her feelings and her stupid sensitivities. No, don't make Owie a piece of shit! Aw, oh, man! Oh man, I'm gonna be very upset. Can I stay at your place for a few days? I got booted out of my apartment for not paying the rent, and well, I was living in this abandoned factory, but I can't do it anymore. I hate being there alone. The guy I was spending time with just disappeared, and now she doesn't know. Um, Owie, are you there? Are they going to make me hate Aoi? 
I'm gonna hate this game. Is this crazy bitch for real? She hasn't spoke to me for weeks, months, and now she wants to live in my apartment. Really? I'm sorry. Sorry, Noriko. You can't stay here. Well, fuck you too. Okay, that's pretty fucked up. My phone beeps twice and the call abruptly ends. What the hell is her problem? Before I even blink, she calls me again. I'm hesitant to answer this time. But. Noriko. Sorry, I overreacted. Everyone, what's in the drinking water in this place? I think I'm in trouble. I think Corpse Girl is trying to kill me and I need somewhere safe to stay. That's the worst thing you say to someone. You think someone's trying to... You think some unknown entity is trying to kill you. Corpse Girl's trying to kill her. I think Noriko has finally lost the plot. Whatever silver of sanity she once held onto has finally slipped between her fingers. Uh-huh. you know you are corpse girl remember since when did how we know what how do you i'm the one who wants to kill you oh your boy called it what the fuck i'm going to fucking murder you in your sleep okay that's creepy Norco's silence convinces me that her memory is returning. Perhaps she called me in some delirious state or because of some fever dream. Shit. Call disconnects as she curses. A stupid bitch, does she seriously forget who she was talking to? I've had it up to here with her. I'm so confused. As soon as Junpei works out the location of her factory, I'm going to. I called it. I fucking called it, didn't I? At the beginning of stream. I fucking called it. As soon as Junpei works out the location of her factory, I'm going to go there myself and slit her throat open with my fingernails. I'll let her bleed out all over me and tell her that she never meant a thing to me. I don't care how much she loves me. I'll end her life quickly before she has a chance to confess her feelings with one... Her feelings with one last gasping dying breath. Once Noriko's dead, the human removal service will no longer have any competition and I'll finally be able to take her place as corpse girl. I fucking called it. Fucking M. Night Shyamalan bullshit twist. Now I'm upset. <laughs> Lazy, boring writing. <laughs> oh, I'm upset. That was like, what was that movie with, I think it was M. Night Shyamalan too, um, with uh, Lindsay Lohan, is that her name? I don't remember, but she had like, it was a movie, not Parent Trap, but she also had a twin in it, and it was like a horror suspense movie, and like her and her other part, or twin or whatever, could feel each other or something, somehow, it was fucking weird, but at the very beginning, Spoilers. I don't know what it, the movie is called, but fucking spoilers. Whatever. Um, there was like one of them was at like a learning dance when, or uh, not dance piano when they were a kid, and the dance or the piano teacher had like a big blue ring or something. There was a lot of blue in his apartment, and you literally saw this person for ten seconds at the very the literally like the opening scene of this movie, All right? And then you get the whole movie of these two girls like knowing where each other are or being hurt or something, 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 something. And at the end, it's revealed that it was the piano teacher. It's like, that's not a fucking twist. If it's someone that you saw for 10 seconds, but I guessed it. I, I even guessed it because I was like, because occasionally there was blue stuff. And I'm like, if it's that fucking piano teacher, that's stupid as fuck. That's not a twist. It's not a twist if you saw someone for 10 seconds at the very beginning and build up all the story. And like, oh, here's that guy. That means nothing. And that's what this game just did. They they revealed Aoi at the very beginning in the the preamble, the pre-circle, whatever. The big the game before the game. As the corpse girl thing. <sighs> <sighs>
the hop said. During her school years, I was always envious of Noriko. She was so beautiful, so slim and graceful, and she had a wonderful family. Parents that love her more than anything. And then I called it about the the photo being submitted of Noriko being from Aoi. Called that. And then when we saw the Legion looking body, I called that was Aoi too. Rank up. Hold the line. What's up, Peanut? Welcome to the stream. Fall. Sorry, I, just, I was just going on a rant because this game just pissed me off. How you doing, my dude? Thank you so much for the raid. What were you playing? Oh, I couldn't find my mouse. Hold on a minute. If you guys don't know Peanut, you absolutely should. He's an absolutely lovely bean. You were playing some more Phasmo? Were you playing some... Oh, like the usual? Hunting ghosts? Were you hunting ghosts with the friendos? Definitely go check out Peanut. Very wholesome streamer. Very lovely dude. Definitely recommend him. You and Bunny? Nice. Did, uh, did you win? Did you get uh, Demon Apocalypse again? Blame Yeti. <laughs> I was even talking about this today. Like before this. It's like, man, if it pulls an M, Light Sha M. Night Shyamalan twist on me, I'm going to be pissed. Because I was like, Owie is too nice and too gentle and too soft. And then we still, we never actually fully got confirmed who submitted Noriko's photo. I was suspicious of Aoi. And then that Legion thing right there, I was like, oh, dip. Ah, oh, this is upsetting me. I got a little murdered just a little bit. Just a little bit. I guess just a little bit is okay, but there's a lot of murder happening in this one. So I guess uh, you'll fit right in. I never had any of that. I wanted so badly to be her. I struggled with my weight back then, but that wasn't the worst of it. I had an abusive mother, mother and a father that essentially ignored my existence. Well, until he killed me by splitting my neck open. Wait, what? Until he killed me by splitting my neck open. Were you resuscitated or something? I would have given anything to trade places with Noriko and feel alive again. It didn't matter to me that Noriko complained about every aspect of her life. She moaned, she moaned about how much she despised her delinquent sister. She griped about how her father walked out on her, but still sent her a birthday card every year. She lamented over the time her mother tried to kill herself in front of her and her sister. Our mother hung from the ceiling, barely alive, for hours and hours until Yuriko figured out how to call it for an ambulance. Fucking A. But I would, I would have taken all that trauma over my own upbringing. I'd have traded my life for hers without a second thought. Noriko had no idea how lucky she was. Even after all these years, I never really overcame my envy of her. I even went so far as to request her death through Corp School's website. Yep, yeah, called that. Is this what I think it is? I think it is my friends trying to get me to watch the anime. No. Wait, is there a Corp Scroll anime? I know there's a... I know there's a Corpse Princess website. In there, this game, this game feels very like it rips off a Death Note. Wait, there is an anime Birch in Peanut. Please confirm. Of course, she didn't die. How could she have? Junpei figured it out before I did. He forced his way into Corpse Girl's website and viewed all the death requests. Someone, Noriko, had placed a comment on the request I submitted. A single line of text never intended to be seen by other eyes. That's me, bitch. What? Yeah, see, Noriko, not very bright. Knowing that she had become Corpse Girl made me made my jealousy grow. I wanted to take her place. I wanted people to fear me, just like they feared her. I wanted any other life, anything that would let me escape my own hellish half-existence. Thanks to trawling through her website, Junpei soon figured out the whole thing was essentially a hoax. Corpse Girl had no ability to cause death. Noriko was simply trying to con people to ending their own lives. It was pathetic. It made me laugh. I decided I would play along with Noriko's delusions in order to ensure her downfall. Aw, man, you're gonna make me hurt, hate Yow- I almost said Yowie. Owie. Also, am I- I'm losing internet connection or something because I just got a welcome to the chat room message. Did I dip out for a second? It's finally time. I get to meet Junpei at the station and walk him home. Yay. The Noise Corporation office is within walking distance from the Shinjuku train station. Getting there is a breeze. Junpei works at the 13th floor of the massive office complex. 
He's one of the top dogs. He's worked really hard to get to where he is. I'm so proud of him. Cut out for a few? That's... Okay, what did you guys miss? We just learned uh, Noriko is... I mean, we we've known for a while, but Noriko is dumb. It's kind of funny to think that I almost got a job near here. This Mujin building is so close to Junpei's office. Noriko and Shinya hooked me up, but I completely bailed on them. Oh well, at the time I had no idea the love of my life worked nearby. I think I'm, it's, I'm right on time, so Junpei should be here any second. As I wait patiently, a familiar looking girl climbs the stairs and wanders past me. Her outfit is kind of unprofessional. I wonder if she's an office employee. She looks like a bit like a troublemaker. I bet you it's Tomoe. But before I even read this line, I guess Tomoe. Wait, you missed barely anything? Is that what you said? Um. Essentially, yeah, Aoi just said that uh, Junpei figured out that Corpse Girl or Norika was Corpse Girl before Aoi did. He's the one that hacked into her website, which I called because of a stupid Wi-Fi hat, um, and found out uh, was he was the one reading all her requests, found out that her whole power thing is a hoax, and she just kind of convinced people to kill themselves, and they found out that she was Corpse Girl because she put a comment on the, the request that said, that's me, bitch. So, stupid. <laughs> so that that is also super stupid because if the the cops got into the website anyway they would find that done so dumb where have i seen her before she caught me staring at her oh no she's walking hey, towards me called it don't i know you from somewhere <laughs> no time to run away she's right in front of me anime fan thank you so much for the follow welcome to the stream welcome to the puppet pile get them on cookie get in that cookie how many visual novel games that you play i played quite a few um actually they're all up on uh youtubes um i can't i can't name them off the top of my head you'd have to check um i think there's maybe in a panel below hold on games game list or maybe there's a command game list games list i don't know there's a list somewhere i think it's in a panel down below about all the games i've played um but it's quite a few okay it, maybe i don't have a command um but yeah i've played uh quite a few visual novels it's norco's friend welcome to the channel thanks for popping in everything's always about fucking noriko The rash girl swoops her hair out of her face and leers at me. A friend of hers as well. Uh, oh. I suddenly remember where I've seen Tomoe before. I think she was in some of Shinya's photos. Is she the girl that Shinya was dating and broke up with? Um, how is Noriko? No, no. I was hoping you could tell me. Everything went to hell, huh? I haven't seen that skank in weeks. I see. I haven't seen her either. Righto. Well, I'll see you around. Just like that, the girl rushes past me and doesn't even look back. Bye. I watch her as she wanders along the platform. Oh, babe! <laughs> Junpei! <laughs> what up, doll? Hey, that chick you were just talking to? She works at Tamuchin. I see her walking around here all the time. Fucking... <laughs> I want to know what conversation happened between Owie and noriko where aoi came out and said i'm i mean besides that time she's like because apparently they already had a conversation where she's like no i'm i'm the murder person of the human removal service because apparently she forgot and she's like no i'm the one trying to kill you although that i'm trying to kill you maybe they weren't successful because they didn't know what factory that must be it that must be I didn't know the factory or where she was staying. You played over a thousand visual novel games past three decades. Holy crap! She's the one I told you about. Wait, that's her? Yup, she used to help that Koshiro asshole deliver bodies for Corpse Girl. I've been waiting for ages to introduce you to. <laughs> oh, 
I nod at Junpei and immediately break into a run. Wait, what? Go get her, babe. Junpei cheers fade as I leave him behind. Tomoe. She's the one helping Noriko. Helping Corpse Girl. We've been waiting for a chance to follow her. Junpei has been keeping an eye on her, but her actions and movements are erratic and hard to predict. Holy crap. But today, fortunately, I have the opportunity to follow her. How he's just getting it, huh? She's connected to so many people. Noriko, Kojiro, or Kojiro, or Kojiro, oh my god, I can't say his name right now. Kojiro, Shinya, they're all involved, involved with Corpse Girl's operation. We want to track them all down, one by one, and cremate them like cadavers. Why Shinya? He didn't do anything. Of course, I'm saving Noriko for last. I'll slice her open, bathe in her blood, and be born again from her corpse. Oh, why are you making me hate Aoi? I hate it. I'll assume her identity and live her life and leave my own painful existence behind. I'll race along as fast as my legs will let me. My feet pound against the train platform, and several people passing by stop to watch me out of curiosity. As long as Tomoe doesn't notice I'm trailing her, then I don't care who sees me. I follow her all the way to the end of the platform, then I blend in the cloud as we board the same train. I knock on the door to what I can only assume is Tomoe's apartment. She answers after just a moment and shoots me a quizzical look. As soon as the door is all the way open, I dash forward and slam into Tomoe with the full force of my tiny body. What the fuck? We tumble into the apartment, through to though Tomoe doesn't even lose her balance. She's a lot bulkier than I am. She absorbs most of the impact and manages to remain standing. Did fucking Owie take that stab? Was that Owie? She took felt no pain from being stabbed? <gasps> she grits her teeth and plants her hands on my shoulders, only to push me back with a mighty shove. What the fuck are you playing at? He just tackled me. I swing a fist at her face. She catches me off guard when she sidesteps my punch and brings her knee up into my gut. I reel back, but the injury doesn't bother me. Take that, you dumb skank! I'll teach you to attack me! I don't care if you're Noriko's friend! I'll put you in the fucking ground! Does she not feel pain? Her long fake nail rakes across my face and blood pours from my torn skin. But I stand firm and stare her down. Does she not feel pain? You're allied with Corpse Girl, right? <laughs> is that what this is about? I don't give a shit about all that anymore. It's all behind me. You know Corpse Girl's identity? Of course I do. Why? Are you curious? Got someone you want to have killed? No. I know that it's Noriko. You're damn right. <laughs> I should have guessed that a friend of hers would be just as psychotic. Noriko can go fuck herself for all I care. I'm done with her shit. So am I. I'm going to kill her. Is she gonna recruit Tomoe? Tomoe raises an eyebrow. That so? Well, she kinda has it coming. Yeah. I see. Corpse Girl is done and dusted. Doubt the public even remembers her these days. It's been two months. It's all about the human removal service. Oh, has that name been released then? Noriko's just Noriko now. But I still won't forgive her for what she did to Kojiro. Yeah, that was kind of fucked. <laughs> if fucking Tomoe ended up liking Cody your own Blech. as clingy as uh Shinya is I don't know this whole group has has a lot of problems what's she talking about does she know something I don't what happened to Kojiro <laughs> do you even know who he is I do hmm you warned me about her you know he said she'd discard us as soon as we weren't useful anymore. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, she had him killed. Fucking burned him alive. Not really. Interesting. Tomoe thinks Noriko killed Kojiro, when in reality, Junpei took care of that freak. He burned the entire morgue down around him. I suppose Kojiro's death caused Noriko and Tomoe's relationship to fall apart. Everything worked out better than Junpei planned. Noriko will die. And so will you for your role in helping her. Oh, come on. Why are you so insistent on messing with me? I ain't never done nothing to you. Hang on. Even though this girl exudes an air of superiority, or stupidity, I didn't expect her to actually be this dense. Surely she's figured it out by now. Are you with the human removal service? I don't say anything. You're kidding me. 
You're the one Noriko has been fighting against this whole time. And you're her best friend. Your point? <laughs> Are you the leader of your little group? No. Right. When Tomoe pauses to brush her hair behind her ear, I strike. My hand darts forward and grips her throat, and I begin to crush it between my fingers. Holy fuck! <laughs> the girl kicks and flails. She beats her fist against my outfit's arm, but I don't flinch. Her gurgling and thrashing brings me no joy. I wish people would simply accept their fate. <laughs> Is she in here? Despite how tightly I'm squeezing her throat, she manages to form the beginning of a word. I can only guess she's trying to call for Shinya. Shinya, the idiot boy she already broke up with. He can't save her now. I tighten my grip and stride forward, pushing Tomoe back and pinning her against the wall. Aoi's much smaller. She kicks at me, out at me and hits me directly in the knee. I refuse to buckle. Dude! This girl's determination... Her fingers continuously claw at my arm, slashing into my flesh and sending flecks of blood across the room. She thinks she can hurt me. She thinks she can fight her way out of her fate. But nothing she does will ever injure me. What? You can't hurt the dead. But she said her dad killed her. But how? Oh, I'm so confused. This thought repeats in my mind as... My face crashes into the floor. A ringing sound in my ears caused me to question what just happened. The residual shockwaves of a dull impact to my skull flow through my head. I wouldn't call it pain, or even an ache, just the sensation that something collided with me. But I'm already on the floor, my lips pressed against the hardwood, my eyes twitching and examining shards of pottery falling to the floor around me. A blanket of darkness descends over me, and I hear the ragged sound of Tomoe breathing and someone's voice asking, Are you okay? But the question isn't directed at me. I don't think anyone cares that I'm lying here in my own blood. She's a zombie. Yeah. I. Okay. So, Pancake, I was kind of on the same theory, right? But so far, this game has been somewhat built on reality. Right? There's been no, no supernatural stuff. There's, there's been people suspicious of supernaturals and all that stuff. But there's been no supernatural stuff actually happening in this game so if all of a sudden they come in and say hey guess what zombies are real that would be disappointing especially if it's in like the last hour i can't count how many movies i've seen where characters claim that they they had an out-of-body experience i've heard the stories in real life too people on the brink of death or unconsciousness tell tales of how they could view their own body from a lofty spiritual perch i never put much stock into such nonsense how can someone dead or dying view the world from any form of clarity when I died all those years ago I didn't experience any such thing it was such a disappointing it was kind of disappointing even though I didn't expect much being clubbed across the head in Toboy's apartment was a completely different experience than the time glass shards pierced my neck I feel like I'm teetering on the edge of consciousness writhing around on the hard floor I can see some light some blurred shapes and I can see my own body down below my body Delicate and frail, and slowly decaying. I don't get it. Why would I have an out-of-body experience now of all times? I sure as hell didn't experience anything in the sort, the sort when my father slipped my neck. So why now? I wonder if any of my victims ever suffered from hallucinations like this before dying. Did, Ko uh, did Kodomi Ida and all those people on the train platform experience this after I cut them up? Oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> Holy shit! She killed Kota Media. <laughs> and all those people on the planet. Okay. I didn't expect that. Did they also helplessly look down on their own bodies from above as the train is screeched past? Emi Katsuno. Boy, did you scream when I pushed her over the balcony railing. Did her spirit leave her body to look down on her splattered corpse? What about the other nameless souls they claimed from Norico's website? There have been so many. So many bodies piled up. Countless gifts pledged to Corpse Girl's name. I didn't kill them because I wanted to shed blood. I did it to delude Nor Noriko, thinking that was the goal at the start, anyway. Noriko never caught on to what I was doing. She took all the credit, thinking she was some all-powerful being in control of the fate of her victims. She never even tried to understand the truth. I slaved away for her, cutting and strangling and slashing and slicing. I piled up bodies for Noriko, but Corpse Girl claimed all the kills. It was a pointless endeavor. 
I think she would have spiraled into madness, even without the power trip. I suppose it doesn't matter now. Things have changed. My only focus now is to kill Noriko. I should have done so right at the start. I'll kill her for wasting my time. As I look down on my body below, I see a girl too scared to go on, too scared to struggle anymore. It's a shame. If I wasn't killed years ago, I might have had a chance to live a normal life. Well, there's nothing else for it. I feel my spirit returning my body. It's a strange sensation because I know I'm not returning to life. How could I? I've been dead for so long. My only chance is to claim Noriko's life for my own. I'll become her and discard this rotting walking corpse. I'm so fucking confused. I'm so very confused. Also, the coloring's all jacked up. Oh, it's probably because I don't have my glasses. I can hardly see without my glasses. Go away, bug. Go away, bug. Maybe it's a delusion she has. I don't fucking know, dude. Like, she can't really be a corpse, right? But at the same time, she doesn't feel pain. I can hardly see without my glasses. Everything is blurry, foggy, lacking a solid outline. Colors bleed into other colors. Blue blends into purple, and yellow melds into brown. It doesn't help that I'm partially colorblind. Never had much luck telling red and green apart anyways. I never figured out... I still haven't figured out why certain colors or words are colored like that, and why they're backwards. I guess that goes along with that she could never tell them apart. Without my glasses, I'm practically blind. Helpless. You're finally awake. She spits at me, and her filthy saliva drips down the side of my face. It's warm. I try to lash out at her, only to find my arms have been bound to my side. I try to scream out, but scream out, but my mouth has been gagged with what I can only assume is a sock. Gross. I try to lunge forward, but I'm strapped tightly to the wooden chair I'm sitting in. I can't believe this. This is so strange. Uh, I just. I hope you were here and you actually overheard that, and that was just a setup. Because. That could have been a setup for both uh, Corpse Girl and Human Removal Service people. Shut up, Shinya. Jeez. Sorry. The blurred forms of Tomoe and Shinya are pacing the room. Even without my full vision, I can tell that the room is bright. Sunlight is pouring in from the open window. It's how much time passed since I was knocked unconscious. But why have they tied me up here? Screaming in the mouth gag somehow loud enough to capture their attention. Someone strides forward and pulls the damp sock from my mouth. <laughs> what? What do you want? I mumble something about being unable to see. Someone who swears, stumbles around for a bit, and then forcefully pushes my glasses on my face. Why would you put glasses on her? She, I wouldn't. Man, someone fucking attacked me like that, and like, uh, nah, you can't see. Good. It means you can't get up and assault me again. What are you going to do to me? To this genius. Her arm gestures towards Shinya, pointed finger loaded with accusation. Me? Look, I, I didn't mean for any of this to happen. This was your plan, you absolute legend. I just saw you were in trouble, so. Why are you here anyway? We're done. Over. Aw. What happened? I wanted to see you. I'm not in the mood for her lovers, for their lovers' quarrel. Let me go. Or bury me. Either way, don't keep me here. You nearly killed me, bitch! It's taken all my strength not to murder you right here! Go ahead. Try it. You can't kill the dead. You're a freak. Let me call my father. I'm sure he can take her in for questioning. He can find out her motives for attacking you. Or Tomoe can just speak up. I already know why she attacked me. There you go. She's trying to take down everyone associated with Corp. Uh oh. Does Shinya not know yet? Oh, Shinya doesn't know yet. Tomoe cuts herself short. Never mind that. I wonder. Is Shinya not privy to Tomoe's relationship with the corpse girl? Intriguing. As Tomoe's former divorce friend, I simply assumed he was part of the operation. I thought he was an accomplice. That's why they were going to kill him, because they thought that he was just involved. If he doesn't know anything, then I don't need to kill him. Oh, good. Let him live. One less person to deal with before I go after Noriko. However, I need to focus on getting out of here first. If you let me go, I'll never bother you again. That's a lie. 
<laughs> a lie. Why should I believe you? You followed me to my freaking home. I'm sorry. Why? Then I'll exchange information for my release. I'll tell you anything you want to know. Lie. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> lie, lie, lie. Like I care. I'm yeah, done right? with all this shit between Noriko and you. Noriko? Has she got something to do with this? Shut up, Shinya. Shinya. Perhaps he's trying to get out of here. I turn my head to him and wait until he looks directly at me. Shinya, I'm so thirsty. Um, can I have some water? <sighs> he pauses. But since Tomoe doesn't interfere, he ducks out of sight. He returns within seconds, holding a half-filled cup up to, out to me. I bomb forward as best I can against my restraints and take a sip of the lukewarm tap water. Thank you. It's worth noting how easy he is to manipulate. He's the complete opposite of my Junpei, who is strong and independent and doesn't let anyone mess with him. So, I've got my offer. Will you let me go if I share information about the Human Removal Service? Shinya's face turns pale. The human removal service? That's... I really couldn't care less about all of that. Is she gonna bite him? <laughs> I told you. I'm done with everything. I see. Tomoe. She might have information that can assist with my investigation. We have to accept her offer. Or you call the police, they walk her out of the station. Or out of this apartment and into the station. Oh, please. You're no cop as much as you fancy pretending to be one. I already told you that Father accepted me as part of the investigation team. You're a hack. A wannabe. Rude. Why can't you just be happy for me? Shut up. Shut up. Shut up! Tomoe storms off in the sheer force of her anger causing the walls to tremble. Shinya and I are alone in the room. Fuck you, webcam. I don't waste another second. I don't know everything that's going on, but it sounds like you're trying to solve the murder cases, right? That's right. I'm really helping the investigation team, you know? That's good. Very good. Please, I have information that might help you. Will you let me go if I share it with you? If you kill Shinya, I'm going to be upset. His nervous eyes dart around, searching for any sign of Tomoe's presence. And then he looks me dead in the eyes and says the very last thing I never expected and ever expected to hear. I'll let you go if you help me kill Noriko Kurosawa. What the fuck? What do you have against Noriko? Uh, what is happening? This is your apartment? Yes. It, please forgive me for intruding. Shinny bounds politely and removes his shoes. He places them carefully in front of the doorstep and takes a stride forward. He takes a good look around before turning to me. You have a nice place. Oh, please. I wish you would cut out, cut the formalities. We're here to discuss serious business. He's acting like we're new co-workers or something. I walk over to the door. I walk over to the door and make sure it's fully closed. I slide the deadbolt into place. The door is locked. I whisper to this under my breath so Sunya can't hear me. Repeating phrases like this has become a sort of mantra. It helps me concentrate. <clears throat> when I'm about 90% sure the door is actually locked, I wander back to Shinya. It takes all my willpower to refrain. That's a new one. It takes all my willpower to refrain from turning back and checking once more. Thankfully, Shinya distracts me from my inner turmoil. Is everything you told me true? I want to make sure I have all the facts straight. Yes, it's true. All of it. Truth intermingled with lies is still the truth, right? I looked out when Tomoe left the two of us alone in her apartment. If I had to explain things to her, I would have had to give her... Oh my god. If I'd had to explain things to her, I would have had to give her inside information on the human removal services operations. Anything less could have clashed with her existing knowledge and caused her to doubt me. But, since I only had to explain things to Shinya... I had already determined that Shinya wasn't in the loop, so I concocted a convincing lie in order to secure his cooperation. And he bought it. Want to get my head around it. Noriko Kurosawa is Corpse Girl. 
She's the one that was behind the initial string of murders across the city. She delivered photos and corpses to her victims in order to convince them that they would die soon. And that had the effect of causing people to kill themselves. Almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. Some say if it's got 2% truth, it's still truth. Is that a saying? Of course, all of this is part true. Kind of. Gina doesn't need to know that I acted behind the scenes and brought the victims low by my own hand. Those act, acts of violence almost seem like a distant memory now. I was so committed to aiding Noriko that I couldn't think of anything else. In the end, my assistance didn't help my own situation. I only propelled Noriko's ego into the stars and continued to suffer my cursed half-existence. It wasn't long before another group started killing people in much the same way as Noriko did. A group called the Human Removal Service. They've killed hundreds, if not thousands, of people in the past months. Again, all true so far. And you... You were enslaved by Noriko? Forced against your will to infiltrate the Human Removal Service and bring them down from the inside? That's right. <laughs> That's a fucking... He's a fucking idiot. That explains why you want to kill Noriko. You want to be free from her. Even if it isn't exactly the legal thing to do. Legal. What kind of pedestal, pedestal is this guy standing on? He specifically requested assistance to do the exact same thing. He wants Noriko dead, just like I do. But if I remember correctly, you only managed to learn one important thing about the Human Removal Service, right? Yes. The group is made up of dozens of members. Dozens of people that all masquerade as the leader known as the Herald. There's no single person responsible for the murders. It's the joint effort of a large group, all striking across the city side. You're just giving police information out? Am I correct? And there's the real kicker. He's absolutely spot on. I didn't mind sharing this tidbit information with him. It does nothing to assist with his investigation. And wrapping the lie, like I was Noriko's lackey, and a blanket of truth makes everything all the more convincing. Yes. That's right. Phew. Okay. I think I understand everything. Thank you for your help. There's one thing I'm not entirely comfortable about. Shinny hasn't been forthcoming with his reasons for wanting Noriko dead. Yeah, I want to know that too. If I don't air the question, I feel like he will never address it. Can you tell me why you want to kill Noriko? He tries to back away from the question by twiddling his thumbs and pretending to examine the nearby wall. Shinya, I need to know. Otherwise, how can I trust you? Trust. It's a word that has always made me laugh. How can I trust anybody? I couldn't even trust my own parents, the people who swore to raise and protect me. Fucking no. My mother hit me when I misbehaved, when I overslept by five minutes or raised my voice ever so slightly. I was a child. How could I ever trust her not to lash out at me? My father. How? How could I ever trust him after he killed me? And Noriko. Noriko, the one friend I opened up to. The one person who knew all about my struggles. She betrayed me. She kept her perfect life out of reach, taunted me with it, dangled it in front of me like a carrot on a string. When?! Did I miss something, chat? Like, did Noriko ever do that? Or is this just Owie projecting? When I asked her to share her life, and when I asked to share her life with her, she completely misinterpreted it. She told me she loved me. She told me she wanted to be with me. She wanted to shower me with gifts, hold my hand, be intimate with me. She wanted to be my girlfriend, but how could I ever be intimate with her after what I went through? She didn't understand me. She didn't understand what I wanted to, that I wanted to be her, not be with her. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I put that together, but any normal non-dead person would not take it that way. She wouldn't trade lives with me. How could I ever trust her? Yeah. Any normal... Uh, my head's starting to hurt. How could I trust her when she said she loved me, but wasn't willing to make a sacrifice to make me happy? Everyone is full of shit, and I'll never trust anybody again. But you're fine with Junpei? I'm so fucking confused. Junpei spends every day trying to prove his love to me. He assists me with my compulsive behavior. He helps me do my shopping. He helps me... He helps get my apartment neat and tidy. Do I trust him? No. Okay, never mind. 
I know what he wants from me. He's no better than Noriko. He's willing to jump through hoops for me in the hope that he'll eventually conquer my flesh. Even when he tries to help out with my compulsions, I don't have full faith in him. He takes it upon himself to complete my checklist of rituals in order to spare me the stress. But more often than that, I still have to go ahead and double check everything just to make sure he didn't fuck anything up. If I can't trust him with that, then I know I'll never be able to trust another soul with anything. Looking at Shinya now, pacing nervously around my apartment, I decide not to put any stock into what he says next. There's no way to tell that I'll believe whatever comes out of his mouth. Noriko is my friend, but my father, Chief Detective Fujikawa, in case you didn't know, has declared her the prime suspect of our investigation. Thing is, father isn't the most lenient person, and he's been cracking under stress lately. If he finds Noriko, if he arrests her, there will be no trial. She'll simply get life behind bars. Guaranteed. Oh. He wants to kill her so she doesn't live in jail. It's a mercy. Ginny hangs his head and I hear a quiet sob. Is that her country's idea of justice? She doesn't deserve anything less than death for her crimes. Oh, never mind then. Letting her live safely behind bars isn't a punishment. It's an act of mercy. I want to ensure Noriko receives true justice, fitting judgment for the lives she destroyed. What he's saying just doesn't add up. How does he know she won't receive the death penalty? It's true that it's not a common punishment, but it's still legal in this country, especially so for cases of mass murder. Shit, does she have information that I don't? Whatever. I'm already sick of this guy. He acts like he's being personally wronged by Noriko's crimes. Like he's so high and mighty and knows what's best. I doubt he knew a single person that Noriko killed. Fine. To be honest, I don't really care about your reasons. As long as you want Noriko dead, then our goals are the same. But I have to ask, will you turn yourself into the police after you kill her? Once again, Shinya hangs his head. He leaves the sentence hanging in midair. It wasn't exactly a confirmation. There is only one problem. I have no idea where Noriko's hiding. She doesn't live in her apartment anymore. She doesn't show up to her office. I know that she has a factory that she runs her operation from, but I can't find it. I, I really want to know the conversation that Noriko and Aoi had, where Aoi pretty much told her that I'm trying to kill you I see I might be able to help Tomoe and Noriko used to spend a lot of time together I'm not sure what they used to get up to but I checked the travel history on Tomoe's IC card and she made a lot of trips to Shinokubo that's uh that's a little much there Shinya her IC card for people traveling by train every day buying single use tickets is often a pain in the ass Reusable IC cards are much more convenient. You can top them up with money and simply swipe them at the ticket gates to have your train fare automatically deducted. Best of all, they keep a record of transaction history in the stations you've traveled recently. Again, these people are not smart. The fact that Shinya even thought to look at Tomoe's travel history makes me want to reconsider my initial assessment of this guy's detective skills. Shina Okubo, you say? Yeah. And imagine what she was doing there, but... All the dates she traveled to that station coincide with days she claimed to be hanging out with Noriko. I still don't think Shinya realized that Tomoe was on that Noriko's operation. Regardless, this is valuable information. Chances are good that Noriko and Tomoe spent a lot of time together at their factory, and that factory may very well be located in Shinokubu. I'll field, I f I'll field this information to Junpei to see what he makes of it. Perhaps he knows something I don't. Thanks for the info. That's enough for today. I'll contact you when I locate Noriko. Oh. Say, just one more thing. He's gonna know about Tomoe. What is it? If you've been wanting to kill her, then why haven't you just called her and asked her to meet up with you? He thinks he's so clever. He thinks he has everything worked out. He doesn't know shit. It's not that easy. I need to 
find where she's living and running her operation from. I want to destroy everything involved with Corpse Girl. I want to burn her factory to the ground. More lies. Lies on top of lies. The truth of the matter is that Noriko knows perfectly well my intentions for her, even if she temporarily forgets it during moments of delirium. She is delirious. She would never agree to meet up with me. Not now. Things were different not so long ago, but I missed that opportunity. Norco worked out my position in the Human Removal Service. She figured out that I'm the Herald, the one for s responsible for slicing and dicing. How? She doesn't know that there's more than one Herald, but that's irrelevant. And she doesn't know that I'm responsible for the mass of bodies littered across Tokyo, thanks to Corpse Girl's website. However, as long as she knows I'm a threat, she'll never agree to meet with me. How she came to the conclusion that I am the enemy is beyond me. She's a sharp person, despite teetering on the edge of total breakdown. It doesn't matter. The point is, I can't simply call and meet up with her. Besides, I actually do want to locate the factory just as much as I want to locate her. The factory is where I'll plant myself. It's where I'll start my new life anew. It's where I'll grow and blossom into the new corpse girl once I've taken over Noriko's identity. Shinya is contemplating my answer. It seems good enough for him. Okay, if you take over Noriko's body, if, if we're going to go on the assumption that she is dead and somehow she can inhabit a different body and she takes over Noriko, won't Shinya try to kill that body? Maybe there's just weird translation or something. Maybe it's just supposed to keep us on our toes, but things aren't adding up with the whole I'm dead, but I'm not dead. Fair enough. You want to see Corpse Girl completely and utterly defeated. I get that. That's your idea of justice. Sure. Agreeing with him will make this ordeal of conversation end quicker. I'm going to get some rest. So... Ah, okay. I understand. I'll take my leave. Call me when you locate Noriko, okay? Yes. Why? Farewell, then. He makes his way to the door and I don't take my eyes off him until he disappears through the portal. When he's gone, I tiptoe toward the door and confirm it's fully closed. Make sure the door is snugly nestled in the wooden frame. I lock the door handle, then slide the deadbolt into place. The door is locked. But is it? The door is locked. I can't be certain. To my eyes, my eyes that fail me on a daily basis, that betray my mind with illusions and phantoms, the door seems to be locked. Illusions and phantoms. I think she suffers from psychosis. But why should I trust my eyes? I don't trust anyone. Why should I trust parts of myself? I can't even see colors clearly. Red, green, whatever. I can't see anything without the aid of glasses. The door has to be locked. It has to be. Otherwise, I won't be able to walk away. I won't be able to stop thinking about it until I come back and check again and again and again and again. The door is locked. I turn away, take a deep breath, then immediately turn back. She's going to end up saying that when she's about to kill Noriko, huh? She's going to end up saying the door is locked. The whole Hodor situation. I'm pretty sure the deadbolt is in place. It certainly looks in place. I'm so exhausted. I'm tired of the routines and rituals. Why can't I just walk away? If I walked away, the problem wouldn't exist. I wouldn't be stuck standing here, checking and double-checking something so trivial. If I could walk away, I wouldn't be so full of stress, so worked up about things that ultimately don't matter. Another deep breath, and I take a step back. Doors locked. I turn, run, dash. I sprint through the room, sprint through the hallway. I slam my body into my bedroom door, throwing it wide open. Ouch. I collapse in my bed. I ignore the nagging in my brain telling me that the door is unlocked. I ignore it until it feels too real and I have to scratch at my flesh just to distract myself. I pull my pillow over my head and hold it tightly around my face. It's safe here. Safe in my bed. The door is locked. Locked. I try to convince myself to fall asleep. Tell myself, tell myself I'll feel better after I rest. I hope I lock the front door. Fuck. This feels a lot like they're, um, what Hellblade did, where it tried to give oh, you yeah, a glimpse I, into... I reckon I'll have some work for you soon. Uh, a glimpse into... People that suffer from like delusions and psychosis and all kinds of other uh, disorders. Um, and fucking Hellblade nailed it. Um, but this game kind of feels like they're trying to do that too. 
The other heralds have been keeping the numbers up. There just haven't been any requests for this area lately, you know? Yeah. I'm only half listening to Junpei. He said something about why I haven't been tasked with killing anyone lately. I don't really care about the reasons. Junpei's the one, only one in contact with the leader of the Human Re Removal Service. I just take orders, like all the other heralds. Not that I've met any of them. Every herald has their own district, their own turf. If a request comes through their, our website, it gets allocated to the herald closest to the victim. It must have been a week since I got, since I last got to kill. Maybe two weeks. It's not that I like the killing. It's not that I want to do it. I fulfill the request simply as a way to antagonize Noriko. It's my role to play in backing her into a corner and shutting down Corpse Girl. Okay, so if Noriko goes away, are you going to stop being a herald? And so far, thanks to my contributions to the Human Removal Service, we have been incredibly successful. Corpse Girl is all but a distant memory in the general public. If people really want to request somebody's death, they come to us, not to her. I don't plan on rena or remaining with this group for much longer, right? After all, Noriko is pretty much already broken. She's a wreck. Once I find her, I'll possess her and quit this group. Is there something supernatural here? Then I'll finally have the life I always wanted. Noriko's life. Have a good one, Pancake. Sleep well, my friend. Hopefully, uh, your school day goes better tomorrow. I'll resurrect Corpse Girl when I feel like it. I'll use my inside knowledge of the Human Removal Services operations to bring them down myself. What the fuck? After that, I'll be able to spend my days in peace, living free of fear, finally comfortable in being the girl I want to be. I'll truly be Noriko. Babe, you in there? I suppose I drifted too far away. I rub my eyes, look at Junpei, and flash in my sweetest fake smile. I'm okay. Sorry, honey bear. I'm very tired. Oh, don't sweat it. You want me to grab you a cup of coffee? Oh, that would be lovely. You always know how to make me feel better. Of course. I'm on it, babe. You wait right there. Junpei stomps away and heads behind the bar, leaving me alone in this empty section of the cafe. I take a seat on one of the cardboard boxes lining the wall. The box is all in thanks to being packed full of various canned drinks. The maid cafe belongs to us in the early hours of the morning. The place doesn't open until noon, so there's no one here this early. I have my own keys these days, regardless of whether or not I'm supposed to. Junpei suggests we use this place as a makeshift base of operations after I decided I was going to continue working here. That was some time ago to now. Originally, I truly had planned to quit. I was going to work with Noriko. My manager at the time used to drive me insane. I couldn't wait to get away. But after I killed him, things weren't so bad. Yep. The new manager is great. He doesn't pressure me to work shifts. I don't want to. He doesn't let customers take advantage of the staff. Neither the new manager nor the old staff members care that Junpei and I meet up down here. Or meet up down here. It's not like we leave any incriminating evidence behind either. It's simply an easy pace, place for us to meet up and talk, since Junpei lives so far away from me. The added benefits is that we have access to cheap drinks and food that takes... And food thanks my employee discount, so hanging out here is actually quite pleasant. I wait for a while longer for Junpei to return. I really could use a coffee right now. His return is heralded by the thump of heavy feet against the tiled floor. Got you, fam. Oh boy. Junpei sidles up next to me. Uh, settles, er, sidles? Is that supposed to be saddles? Sidles up to me. Siddles up to me and hands me my favorite drink. A tall iced coffee with an extra espresso shot and a dollop of ice cream. I know it. He giggles, his, giggles in his insanely irritating, high-pitched way and begins to chug down his own latte. So I, I wanted to ask you a favor. Anything for you, honeybee. A tuft of milky foam sits on his top lift, and I have to hold myself back from stabbing him in the face. Yeah, she's a... Uh... What's it called? A sociopath? Noriko apparently spent a lot of time in Shin Okubo with her accomplice Tomoe. Shin Okubo, huh? Good old K-Town. What'd they go there for? Karaoke? Doubt it. Noriko sounds like a drowning cat when she sings. <laughs> then what? Well, I was cat I like highlighted. That's where the factory is located. Oh, gotcha. Ooh, you could be onto something. I have to make fucking notes. I have so many questions about this game. Highlight. Because I got to think of like writing a review, right? 
for steam and stuff later and there's so much fucking that i'm trying to keep in my brain that i've already forgotten most of it so i have to start writing it down Bodies around, it's definitely a viable location. I agree. Right on. I'll look into it. I'll track down factories in that area and get my troops to investigate each one. I'm careful not to let him see me roll my eyes. By his troops, he means the guys he plays online games with. <laughs> online games with a bunch of teenagers that all look up to him because he's a top-ranked player. They're not involved with the human removal service. They're just pawns that Junpei uses to complete legwork around town. Sadly, they're happy to serve him because they all see him as their sensei. Cool. Let me know what you find out. I'm itching to get this all over with. My love. It's increasingly difficult to act pleasant around Junpei. My mouth tries to clamp itself shut every time I use a pet name or affectionate term. I know that my time to discard him is near. Once I become Noriko, then... Count on me, sweetums. Now drink up and get your energy back. I take a sip of my iced coffee and can nearly taste it. Because my tongue is dead, the food and drinks I consume need to be extra strong or sweet for me to have a chance of enjoying the flavor. But Junpei doesn't know this. He just thinks I have a sweet tooth. He can think whatever he wants because I just don't care. Ah. A message from Junpei arrives while I'm lying in the fetal position on my couch. Hey cutie, the guys checked out a bunch of factories yesterday. Got the location. Hit me up. I have to read the message twice to be sure my eyes aren't deceiving me, like, deceiving me like usual. Does he truly have the location I've been looking for? I take a calming breath. I don't want to jump to conclusions, especially with something involving Junpei. He has the tendency to exaggerate and may just be trying to get me excited about some useless information. I send him a short reply requesting the info. I instantly receive a thumbs up emote. Then the text box changes to an animated dot 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 as Junpei composes his follow-up message. The wait is agonizing. If Junpei pulls through for me here, I might finally learn Noriko's location. If it all pans out, then everything could be over by tonight. It's hard to not get excited about the prospect. It's hard to not get ahead of myself. I could leave my death behind and never look back. I could become Noriko and live the happy life she has been keeping to herself all these years. I wonder if, um, the, the, out of the three choices that I've been prevented in this game, I wonder if they actually affect this far into the story. Like, what if I didn't follow, um, Aoi that one time and it pissed her off? Would she end up being a murder path that wants to murder me? I could leave my death behind and never look back. I could become Noriko and live the happy life she has been keeping to herself all these years message finally arrives on my screen. It's an address. Not that I expected anything else. A street name and a factory number in the Shin Okubo area. One more message from Jupe comes through. Is it a picture? My guys saw a chick matching Noriko's description inside the factory. They thought she was a zombie. Ah, go check it. This is it. As long as this information is solid, I've located Noriko's factory. My entire body begins to shake. An icy chill washes over me as though I've just walked into a cold shower. It's a strange sensation for a dead girl to feel. Pain doesn't affect me, and yet, the cold is something I can never banish from my bones. No time to focus on that. I have to stay calm. I need to concentrate and pull myself together. I can... When people touch you, do they not feel like you're ice? I'm confused. I launch myself up from the couch to collect the backpack hanging over the coat rack. I unzip it, run my hands through its contents, and convince myself that everything I need is within. After swinging the bag over my shoulder, I throw... Open the apartment door and venture outside. Oh shit. The factory is a rundown mess. How anyone can live here is beyond me. I suppose I'll just have to find a way to make it feel like home. Maybe once I'm inside Noriko's skin, I'll be able to understand why she is comfortable here. Yeah, the more I look at it, the better it seems. This will be my home. I'll be Noriko and live here happily ever after. I'll sit back and enjoy the life that has... That she has been withholding for me. Firstly, I need to find somewhere to change my clothes. I can't kill someone if I'm wearing my nice dress. That's just not acceptable. I did consider changing at home, but then I would have scored funny looks from people on the train right over. Just wear your Legion outfit. 
Is it strange that a dead girl fears entering a socially awkward situation? I just go out of my way to avoid uncomfortable situations. Perhaps that's just a remnant of the life I once knew. Something that I can't quite leave behind. It's the same as my obsessive compulsions. They cling to me like carrion flies swarming over my corpse. I shouldn't be worried about any of those things. But, dead or, dead or not, my mind can't just discard the anxieties that shaped my entire life. Wait, what am I doing? Why am I tra trapping myself in pointless thoughts? My goal is right in front of me. Norco is on the other side of that brick wall, completely unaware of what is, of what is about to happen. A heavy-handed slap to my face doesn't sting, but it causes me to reevaluate what I'm doing. Focus. First, I'll cha change into the gear provided to me by the Human Removal Service. Then I'll shimmy into the factory through an open window. I'll locate Noriko and drive a knife into her chest. I'll pluck her still beating heart from her body like a ripe strawberry, and I'll carve my name into the pulsating, blood spurting organ. Norgan? <laughs> Norgan? Noriko's life will be over, and I'll be reborn. I'll baptize myself in her lifeblood and become the girl I've always wanted to be. And I'll be happy. Happy just like Noriko. That smiling, carefree girl that I spent my youth with. The girl that faced her mother's attempted suicide with, stoic, with a stoic smile. The girl that didn't flinch when her father walked out. The girl that stayed inside day after day when the outside world just became too scary to face. The happy, carefree girl without a single real problem. She never knew how good her life was. She wouldn't have lasted a day in my shoes. I hate her so much. I'm going to become her. My backpack hits the ground with a dull impact. I tear my yellow sundress from my shoulders and let it fall to the ground just like a snake sheds its skin. The cool afternoon breeze bites at my naked skin and makes the tiny hairs across my body stand on end. If you were dead, uh, why can't the dead feel? Why can the dead feel the cold? The dead shouldn't feel anything. I crouch and rummage through my backpack, withdrawing my change of clothes. Slowly, calming, deliberately, calmly, deliberately, I undress my, I adjust myself in the dark gear that marks me as a herald, one of many. I note the comforting weight of four knives concealed within my jacket, one in each sleeve and two against my chest. It's important to be armed to the teeth. After donning every article, I pull a broad mask out of the bag. A mask in the likeness of Corpse Girl, my enemy and my future identity. I slide the mask over my face and a curtain of calm descends over me. This is the last time I march forward in the name of the Human Removal Service. This is for my own personal agenda. The scheming of the rebellious group of killers no longer guides my hand. The time has come. I approach the factory's front entrance and try the door. Simp I try the door, simply out of curiosity. I don't expect Noriko to have lowered her guard so much, and yet, the door swings open. She left it unlocked. A mistake I never would have made thanks to my overbearing compulsions. This place reeks of death. If I wasn't so accustomed to the smell, I'd probably vomit. Do dead girls vomit? The dull, steady hum of an air conditioner registers in my consciousness, but doesn't distract me from examining the surroundings. Countless empty body bags are strewn across the pockmarked concrete floor. Some are stained with brown blood, and some are completely clean. A series of shelves, almost like warehouse racks, run along the walls and across the floor in haphazard patterns. Whoever planned this layout was out of their mind. However, this is home now. My home. Soon. Striding forward, I weave between the shelves and step over discarded body bags. So far, there has been no indication of Norco's presence. Still, I draw a knife from inside my sleeve so that it rests in the palm of my hand. The metal handle is cold. Cold. Why do I feel cold? Because you're not dead. The entire factory is like a freezer. How can Norco live here? Hey. My torso twists in reaction to the monotone syllable. The quick movement sends a shooting pain across my chest. Pain? Pain? It's you. Hello, Harold. <laughs> Look at that photo. It took me a while, but I figured out what your mask is supposed to be. It's like an artistic representation of Corpse Girl, right? The Corpse Girl mascot that appears on my website. Mm-hmm. Norco flashes her phone at me and I glare at the website display. Hmm. That's totally copyright infringement. I don't like or I don't know what to say to her. 
This isn't exactly how I managed this encounter would play out. Why'd you fake Junpei Matsumoto's death? You know what I'm talking about, right? That time we met in the underground parking lot. You planted a look-alike corpse to fool us into thinking Junpei had died. Total corpse girl move, by the way. Guess you stole that strategy from me, too. I sense a lawsuit. She steps forward with a hand outstretched. I instinctively lash out with my knife and slash her wrist. But her hand comes to rest on my shoulder, a tiny nick from my inaccurate blade not even prompting a spurt of blood. Ouch. That stung a little. The warmth of her hand seeps in my shoulder. It's almost comforting. Oh, uh, she knew. I miss you. All right. I really miss you. Oh my God! What's happening? The mask? Can we just talk? I don't take off the mask. I don't know why I am standing here listening to her. I don't know why her presence and her reassuring hand has caused me to lower my guard. Fuck you, website or webcam. She smiles. This is the happy, carefree Noriko I grew up with. You're so beautiful, Aoi. I'm really sad we can't be together. Or things with your boyfriend. I... The music is so good, though! That single, useless word crawls out of my rotting mouth like a diseased maggot. That's all I can bring myself to say. I have to turn up the music. It's so good. You can't tell me? Hmm, that's okay. You used to be so open with me. And then, you died. We tried to keep our friendship going after that, but... We've never really been the same since then, have we? You knew Aoi when she was killed? I hope you get the help you need, Aoi. I hope one day we can put all of this behind us. I have to, I'm so confused. Is she actually dead or is it just in her brain? My fingers loosen, the grip on my knife weakening. It falls to the concrete ground. I don't need it anymore. I tense my arms and squeeze my hands together, desperately trying to crush Noriko's throat between, beneath my fingers. Her skin is warm and flushes red as my grip tightens. Oh, she actually grabbed her. She kicks against me, but the pain doesn't register. She's weak and frail. Okay. More dope music. Her strangled cries drowned out by my own grunts of exertion. Anemic fingers swipe. Uh, she was anemic. Uh, swipe at my arms constantly, only serving to irritate me. I could hold her neck in one hand and use my other to plunge a knife into her face. I could continue to strangle her until I crush her windpipe. Fuck you! The stupid webcam utility, man. Or I could slash her stomach open and let her intestines spill out onto the ground. All of the options are appealing. All of the options can be put into motion within seconds. I take my right hand off her neck and slip it into my jacket, ready to pull out a knife. My left hand closes tighter on her neck. And Noriko closes the di And Noriko closes the di distance between us, causing my elbow to bend and allow her closer. Her forehead slams into my own, and my neck recoils backwards. I'm falling to the ground, only able to blink once as I try to work out what just happened. She somehow summoned the strength to headbutt me. Frail, weak, ghostly Noriko. She actually stood up for herself. She actually struck the person she loves. I'm dazed, but ultimately uninjured. I didn't even feel the impact of my skull against the concrete when I landed flat on my back. Norco towers over me and rubs her neck, her ragged breathing even louder than the thrumming air conditioner. Sorry, Allie. I had to defend myself. And here comes the, the breakage again. Please, get up. Let's talk about things. I get up. I slip the knife into her. I slip the knife into her side and feel it slide neatly between two of her ribs. Her taut, thin skin does nothing to resist impalement. Norco looks down at the wound and mumbles in surprise. Oh, I drive the knife in deeper with a flick of my wrist. And with a flick of my, flick of my wrist, I pull it sideways, slashing her belly wide open. An arcing stream of blood sprays from the savage wound and forms a macabre rainbow before me. Norco coughs, coughs and gags as she frantically tries to stem the tide of blood with her hand. <laughs> Damn it. Of course, girl. Well, 
She falls to her knees. Her empty threat falls with her and her face slams into the concrete. Norco Kurosawa is dead. Using the very same knife that slashed her open, I cut along the seams of my jacket and skirt. I strip myself down with the blade until I am standing cold and naked in the factory. It doesn't take long to strip Norco down as well, but I am extra careful, careful with her clothes and I don't use the knife with this time. I simply pull her dress up and over her until it slides free from her motionless body. I hold the dress up against me, letting it press against my own form. I look down and admire the sight of myself, imagining what I'll look like when I wear it. I can finally become Noriko. I can wear her clothes, live in her factory, talk to her friends, work at her office. I can do all the things that she loved to do and the things that made her happy. I slip the dress over my head and force my arms through the sleeves. It's a little long, but overall it fits me nicely. I'm Noriko Kurosawa. Yeah, she's... She's delusional. Final act, Norco Kurosawa. Hey, she, uh, act three, clear. Oh my God, there's another act. Ah, we're not done. When mother killed herself, she didn't die. Well, she died, but not really. It's a funny thought. Everything that she was, everything that made her As Asuna Kurosawa left this planet on that day. Her body remained, but her soul had departed. She got sent away to a care facility and I didn't see her very often after that. We're back to Noriko. On the rare occasions I visited her, I would always notice that her eyes no longer looked like mine. I hate her for what she did to our family. Yuriko and I were only children at the time. The mother hung herself up from the ceiling and made us watch. She encouraged us to kick the chair out from under her. What the fuck, dude? Also, looks like I keep dropping internets and all sorts of annoying things. We didn't understand what she was doing. She told us it was a game. So we kicked the chair and we laughed. The mother laughed, and then her neck snapped, and then she stopped laughing. And that lit, and that light in her eyes that I once shared with her was extinguished instantly. Yuriko screamed, and I screamed. Mother just wouldn't move, and we couldn't get her down from the ceiling. And eventually, Yuriko remembered how to call for an ambulance, and the paramedics arrived, and we were taken away. And after that, I complete. And after that, I was completely fucked up because you don't just walk away from something like something like that and act like nothing happened. I spent years trying to force the painful memories of her attempted suicide out of my mind. But I didn't exactly cope with it very well. How could I? I became terrified of the world and became used to locking myself inside and wasting away. Yuriko, Yuriko dealt with it a little better than me. I can't say her rebellious behavior was the right way to cope, but it had to have been healthier than staying inside for weeks at a time. By the time I reached senior high school, I think I had mostly gotten past everything. The vision of mother hanging from the ceiling in front of me didn't haunt my dreams. The sound of our laughter intermingled with screaming didn't always ring in my ears. Aoi helped me, out, helped me through a lot of it. She shared all of her problems with me and it made me feel a bit better, like maybe my life wasn't so bad. Aoi's life was kind of messed up. Her father was arrested for various crimes and didn't spend much time in her life. When we were about ready to graduate, he came back to town and violently attacked her. She called me and told me that he killed her. She killed him too. So it was all going to be okay. Her words, not mine. I never understood what she meant when she said she was dead. I think graduating put some distance between us, so I never truly really tried to figure out her words. My own problems came back to haunt me once I moved out of home because I came, became completely distracted and almost forgot about Owie. The apartment I moved into. I should have known that the smell of the mold wasn't normal. I should have paid attention to the shoddy repair work that had been performed on the wall. I should have just walked away and found somewhere else to live. But that apartment, I suppose that's where I started to lose control of my life. And that's exactly the reason why I need to return here. <sighs> Looks the same as always. How are you alive? I'm not looking forward to climbing the rest of the stairs up to the apartment. I can hardly walk at all, even on flat ground. But I have to do this. I can't let stitches and bandages and painkillers distract me from getting inside. You lived. I don't understand how long. I don't know how long I was in the hospital for. None of my personal effects were with me when I woke up. I had no phone, no purse, no handbag. But the doctors monitored me for a few days and then let me go, even though I told them I had nowhere to return to. They just threw me onto the street. 
They couldn't even tell me what happened to the girl who attacked me. They had no idea if she had been arrested or not. I have a feeling she's still out there. Regardless, I'm here now. My wound is apparently on the mend, and I don't have any signs of infection. All I have to focus on is the ascent in front of me. Each step I climb is more difficult to conquer than the last. Each time I raise my leg, I experience a tearing, searing agony along the length of my stomach. More than once, I have to stop and check that my stitches haven't torn wide open. Yeesh. When I'm sure my flesh is more or less intact, I continue scaling the mountain. My head throbs and beads of sweat drip down my face. When I hit the landing on the level below my own apartment, I spy a familiar face. Hey. Noriko? Momo Ogawa, the daughter of Kenji Ogawa, the man I framed in order to maintain my innocence. Hey, Momo. Dad! The panic cry isn't the reaction I was expecting. Yeah, she's like, uh, this guy, this lady's back. Her father is ex exiting their apartment just as Momo cries out. He does a double take before glaring at me. Noriko. Surprised to see you here. I like this guy. I can't quite get a grasp of his tone. Is he happy to see me or angry? I'm really upset. Does he even know that I'm the reason he was arrested? Well, I'm assuming the police let him go fairly quickly. I can turn down the music again. After all, he's here at his home and not rotting in his cell. Hello. The landlord said you disappeared. Yeah, kind of. Are you okay? You look like his gaze turns to the hospital tags adorning my wrists and the package of spare bandages i have slung over my shoulder you know you disappeared right around the time the police huh forget it it's nothing he doesn't know i have a bad feeling he's beginning to piece something together if it works out in the mind is false arrest then sorry i should go yeah come on Momo. Bye, Noriko. Aww. Bye, Momo. He's a good dude. He doesn't want to, like, ruin his daughter's... Or doesn't want to traumatize his daughter. He doesn't want to ruin his daughter's... I don't know. She, she, like, looks up to Noriko, kind of. Doesn't want to ruin that. And the girl waves excitedly as her father leads her downstairs. I should feel relieved that he's safe, but honestly, I just feel guilty. Actions... Corpse Girl's actions. See, now she's talking about Corpse Girl as her in the first person. Is, is she being treated? Because <gasps> she stopped taking her pills. That whole time that she was in the factory, she wasn't taking any of her pills. Was she? Corpse Girl's actions put a lot of strain on that little family. I have to keep going. The last flight of stairs is torture on my battered body, but I preserve and reach the front door of my apartment. I'm surprised your apartment's still available. It's at this moment that I remember I don't have any keys to get in. Shit. Out of desperation, I try turning the handle, and the door opens. Either I left the place unlocked, or the landlord has been inside and forgot to lock up. I'm just thankful that I can keep moving forward. The curtains are open, bathing the living area in a soft light. I'm home. Home. No, that's not right. This isn't my home. This isn't, this isn't Noriko's home. This is Corpse Girl's home. I never really lived here. I simply existed within these walls. The real Noriko was held hostage by an omnipotent, omnipotent presence sealed in this home. The things here are just as I left them so long ago. It's a comforting feeling, but at the same time, it sends a chill down my spine. She must be being treated. It's, a it's time to move on. I stride with purpose towards the kitchenette and slide open one of the drawers. Inside is a small mallet with a metal head. It's a treasure I acquired from the garden shed on the apartment grounds back when I first moved in. It's not very large, but that suits me just fine. I don't have the strength to wield, wield anything bigger than this. Bringing it, to, bringing it to bear is still a great deal of effort. I grip the handle with both hands and lift the deceptively heavy tool. Equipped with this tiny weapon of destruction, I slowly lurch through the hallway. She's going to go beat down that door. I make my way to the very end where a blank, stark white wall faces me. The paint on the wall is peeling like it was slapped on without care. The plaster is cracked like it was applied by an amateur. And the lingering stench of mold is at its strongest when I stand in front of this wall. I bring the mallet down with both arms, the heavy metal head crashing into the wall with as much force as I can muster. The struggle of bearing the mallet is taking its toll on my wound. I feel the stitches in my stomach threatening to snap and break, but I can't stop here. 
I can't stop until I crush this wall and reveal the glittering contents of the trove hidden inside. Another swing and another crash against plaster. A cry of pain and another hole in the wall. I scream and swing and hand swing and the hammer and groan and slash and weep and the wall crumbles beneath my sheer force of will. White dust clouds my vision and provokes me into a coughing frenzy. When my eyes and throat clear up, I throw the mallet to the carpet and venture forward. I clamber through the human-sized hole in the wall and find myself within the secret cache on the other side. How did you know about it? Besides the smell. Yeah, 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 I don't like it. The stench assaulting my nostrils is no longer disguised. It no, it no longer disguises itself as mold. It's the fetid malodor, malodor of a rotten decay. The imitable trademark of, de of a decomposing corpse. I spent so long fooling myself into believing it was nothing concerning. I spent so long pretending that a corpse did not live within the walls of this apartment. The truth is, this corpse pinned to the wall is the root of all evil. It's an infinite fount of misery and despair and malice and death and hatred. This is Corpse Girl. How did... Hello, old friend. How did you know? And Oh god, I'm so confused. The corpse does not reply. To call it a corpse is no longer entirely accurate. It has become little more than a skeleton, an osseous edifice, and a macabre tribute to the unyielding sands of time. Bone and flesh and hair and fabric blend and inter intertwine and meld together to form a sickening representation of human beauty. Beauty. I used to think this body was pure perfection, back when the corpse was more or less intact. It was the image of a gorgeous, vibrant young woman. What if, going back to my original theory from forever ago, what if Noriko actually does have multiple personalities? And she has personality of Tomoe, Kujiro, Noriko, and Aoi. Maybe Shinya, but I doubt. Mm, no, because, well... I don't know. Maybe. Wait, did I read that? I used to think this body was pure perfection. Back when the corpse was more or less intact, it was the image of a gorgeous, vibrant young woman. I aspired to become just as beautiful. How did you find it? Slender, elegant, graceful, with pale skin and dark eyes. Looking at her now, it's clear to see I was deceived. The form before me is not beautiful. It's revolting. I shape myself in the image of death, truly believing I was transcending mortal beauty. This corpse controlled me for so long. This corpse manipulated me and made me want to become just like it. Somewhere along the way, my own identity became, began to dissolve and I started to believe that I'd become this rotting carcass, this pallid bag of flesh. The spell has been broken. I don't know if it's because of my near-death experience or the clarity of mind inspired by an intoxicating cocktail of painkillers, but I no longer want to associate myself with Corpse Girl. I want to be myself, just Noriko. I no longer want, want to kill in the name of this blasphemous effigy. Corpse Girl, I found you here, trapped in this storage closet. How did you find her just over a year ago. there if it was plastered over? And you stole my life from me. Looking at her now, I can't help but wonder what the hell went through my mind when I let her possess me. Why did discovering this corpse have such a profound, lasting effect on my psyche? I shut my eyes as a wave of dizziness threatens to overcome me. Staggering in the near darkness, I struggled to regain my balance. I had blocked out the memory of discovering this corpse for so long, I refused to acknowledge that it ever happened. But the crystallized fragments of that forgotten memory have finally breached the surface of my consciousness. I can finally recall the event thanks to the clarity brought about by my current state of mind. Oh boy, here we go. It happened seven days after I moved into this apartment. The musty smell of mold lured me to the wall at the end of the corridor. The wall that had been hastily patched up and covered with plaster and paint. I wondered about the source of the smell. I figured it might be a leak, a busted pipe that needed repair. Instead of calling upon the landlord for assistance, I took matters in my own hands. Perhaps I was inspired by newfound independence. I had just become a free young woman living on my own for the first time. Perhaps I was just stupid. I located a mallet in the garden shed. I tore down the wall. I found Corpse Girl, and in that moment, I fell to my knees. 
Some ha someone had hung this corpse upon the wall and decorated the storage room with books and photographs. The sight of the dead woman bearing down on me instantly unearthed the buried memories of my mother attempted suicide. The pain and despair that I had repressed for so long found its way out of my mouth and formed an unholy scream. I think the fear of that discovery and the subsequent revival of subdued memories caused me to slip in and out of consciousness. I was paralyzed by fear and my entire body was racked with pain. Looking back now, I feel like I must have spent days lying in a heap on the floor of the storage closet. Oh my god. Days spent within a dreary haze of dread and depression and distress. Days spent at the feet of the hanging corpse that form that form I began to look up to and idolize. Days spent in a lull, a fever dream, surrounded by photographs on the wall of an on the wall of all manner of corpses. Days and days of my soul and identity slipping between my fingers. Something must have eventually cracked inside me because I remember getting to my feet and repairing the wall. I don't know how I did it, but I patched it up and painted over it and vacuumed all the dust and debris from the carpet. And then the memory of the entire incident just vanished from my mind. The only relic I retrieved from, the, from that storage space was a single book, a heavy tome that must have dealt, tumbled out of the closet during my delirium. False photography. A comprehensive guide of photo manipulation. Yeesh. Now. Corpse girl doesn't look the way she used to. Uncovering her today hasn't shocked me into submission like it did all that time ago. Am I stronger now? No. Not really. But I was prepared to face her this time. And now I'm here to bury her. As I calmly assess how difficult it would be to retrieve her from her position, my eyes fall upon the dozens of photos plastered haphazardly across the walls. Photographs of nameless bodies printed with an instant camera. There must be 10 or 20 or 30 corpses across the entire series of images. I don't recognize any of them. That's the only comfort I can take from viewing the images. The comfort that I'm not the one who decorated this room with these macabre visuals. Whoever put these photos up is undoubtedly the same person responsible for hanging the corpse girl on the wall. All the photos look so real, and all the corpses are in such normal situations. There's an image of a decomposing body sitting on a bench waiting on a train platform. He's wearing a suit, like any ordinary businessman. Ah, Kojiro was taking corpses out and posing them. He was doing that long before he called that. Or, he, I guess he kind of alluded to it earlier. Another image is of a headless couple, oh god, headless couple at a dinner table, dressed in their Sunday best. They are sharing a candlelit meal. Corpses going on about their daily life. It's eerily reminiscent of something else I've encountered before. What was it? A book I read? Instinctively, my eyes dart through the piles of books toppled over in a corner of the storage room. There are dozens of duplicate books, as if they were abandoned here by their own author. I crouch and dust off the cover of the book on the top of the pile. Dazed by the dead, Noble Sinclair. I was wondering if Noble Sinclair is fucking Kojiro. Noble Sinclair. Underneath ten more copies of the volume is a different book with a familiar cover. A strange Flower. I know this. The very same book that Kojiro lent me so long ago. Except the book here is not some worn, well-read library copy. It's in pristine condition, save for the layer of dust coating it. There are nearly a dozen copies of this book as well. Someone intentionally abandoned these books here, and the fact they are accompanying so many photos of corpses, not to mention Miss Corpse Girl herself, is no coincidence. These books and photos, as well as the copy of Os Photography I found here so long ago, all of this somehow embedded itself into my consciousness and inspired me to start Corpse Girl's website. I'm sure of it. This room. This fucking cursed room ruined my life and corrupted my mind. And I have to wonder if somebody planned it all. Did somebody leave all these things here in order to break whoever entered? That's probably a far-fetched concept, but I'm desperate to place the blame on somebody, anybody but myself. Enough. A light slap to my face snaps me out of my inner ramblings. It's time to bury Corpse Girl and put this life behind me once and for all. I can't really atone for the things I've done this last year. Hell, I don't actually feel like I need to atone. It's not guilt that's eating me up inside. But, at the very least, I can move on. I can carefully... I carefully remove the restraints tying Corpse Girl to the wall and feel the weight of her rotted body collapse against my own frail form. Yeesh. Her head leans against my shoulder, and for a brief moment, I pause and let her rest against me. I run a hand through what's left of her hair. 
She's been through a lot. We both have. We're both corpse girl. Well, we both used to be. Now we're just some empty husks with no purpose. If we're not corpse girl, we'll probably be forgotten. Lost to time and memory. For once in my life, I'm looking forward to being forgotten. Finale. Oh my god. Ending C. There's multiple endings? Oh, fuck me, dude. <sighs> oh my god, we're still going. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. I make a quick enough apologetic bow to my coworkers before hurrying over to my desk. No one seems too bothered about my tardiness. A few people often offer a raised eyebrow, but they quickly return to their work. I take a seat at my workstation and switch my computer on. It works to life as I organize my belongings. From my handbag, I retrieve some key items. First is my canned coffee, still ice cold thanks to convenience store powerful refrigeration. Second is my headphones. I can't complete a day of tedious data entry without listening to music. Last but not least is my phone. The screen is a little cracked and the protective case has seen better days, but it's invaluable to me. Something feels slightly off as I look at the screen. There's a nagging feeling in my mind. Some small voice telling me that this isn't my phone, but I know it's mine. The familiar red case, the spiderweb fractures itchy are inching across the glass. It's my phone, no doubt about it. Pushing the strange thoughts from my mind, I turn my attention to my computer. It doesn't take long to read over the day's list of tasks. I'll be continuing what I started yesterday. Easy. Noriko? I'm startled by the sudden vocalization of my name. I don't know why people... I don't know why people call me by my name every day. Don't they? Oh, hello, Fujikawa. Shinya Fujikawa is standing at my desk, scratching his cheek awkwardly. I get the feeling he wants to approach a topic of conversation that makes him nervous. I... Um... I wanted to apologize... I haven't been present in the office of late. Also, I don't know if you guys saw, but this ending was named Hell. Ending C. Was there anything you needed to discuss with me during my absence? Um. I think about the question. Shinya and I don't really need to talk on a day-to-day -day basis. His work is fairly unrelated to mine. I'm just data injury temp after all. But we do have a history together, I suppose. We went to the school together after all. We were never actually... Never exactly friends. Actually, I always kind of had the feeling he had a crush on me. But he's not really the type of guy to make a conf confession. Howie's always... Howie... Harry, okay, so we're referencing... Howie. Howie always used to joke about how he and I would make a cute couple. But I could never see it. He was, and still is, far too dull for my tastes. Howie. Why does that name sound so distant? I try to put my face to the name... I tried to put a face to the name, but my mind draws a blank. He was my best friend, and yet... Noriko? Oh, sorry. I get lost in my own head sometimes. Ah, uh, yes, I see. Well, if there's nothing you need, then I'll be on my way. Okay, then. Hey, uh... Hmm? Your old friend, uh, Aoi Sato, have you heard from her lately? Actually, I feel like something must have happened to her. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? God knows how long. That's so. It's too bad. I find it odd that he leaves the conversation with those last words. He simply walks away from my desk. My phone cries out. The unfamiliar ringtone. One that I never selected. Or one one that I never selected splits my head wide open and prompts my brain to sp spill out between the cracks in my skull. I squeeze the sludgy gray matter back into my head. I gotta reread that. The unfamiliar ringtone, one that I never selected, splits my head wide open and prompts my brain to spill out between the cracks in my skull. I squeeze the sludgy gray matter back into my head and blink a few times. Then realize that my brain is not actually leaking. Just the trick of the light. What the fuck is happening? I struggle to maintain eye contact with the screen. The caller ID flashes across the device, identifying the caller as Noriko. Me. My own name. Myself. 
Dorothy was calling me. I'm calling myself? A dull ache still throbs within my head as though it has been recently emptied. I answer the call. Hello? I hear a sharp inhalation of breath and the call cuts out. I take a few seconds for me to realize I'm crying. Shinya is at my side, his arm around my shoulders, and within seconds the rest of my co-workers are staring down at me. I'm on the floor, my face nestled within the plush office carpet, but I don't know how I got here. I'm supposed to be stoic, unflinching. It's my ideology, my entire identity. I'm so fucking confused. So much for stoic, unflinching Noriko. Remember stoic, unflinching Noriko? Maybe if I just close my eyes, I can make everything return to normal and start this day over again. Oh no. Are we in a PT moment? The stairs upward feels particularly difficult to climb today. It was a rather strange day at the office, but I know that returning home to my family will make me feel better. Jin took me to the train station and waited until he boarded my train. It was really sweet of him. I don't fully recall the things that he said to me. He might have mentioned something about not needing to return to the office anymore. Maybe all my work there is complete, or maybe all my work there is completed? My head is still a bit fuzzy, but it's I'll sift through the details after a hot shower later tonight. Since the sun is beginning to go down, I think the others should be home by now. Others? You're going to Noriko's apartment? She doesn't have family. Yuriko is probably relaxing on the sofa, and Mother should definitely be here, since she doesn't leave the apartment these days. I unlock the door of the apartment and wander inside. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh my god! What is happening? She assumed her identity? I I thought that too, but this doesn't make sense. It doesn't line up. Stepping through the... Unless I missed something that said like... The ending here had like a time passage and I missed it. Stepping through the open door is always a comforting feeling. It's good to return after a long day at work. There you are. Good evening, big sis. Good evening, mom. Yuriko offers me a warm smile. She's changed a lot recently. Her foul, rebellious attitude disappeared when she moved in. Maybe she simply wanted our family to be reunited again. Maybe her delinquency was all just an act. A way of trying to deny what she really wanted. To simply return home. Alright, so this is kind of backing up my theory that it's multiple personalities. Because this is more Kojiro, right? Collecting corpses. Mother, on the other hand, doesn't really regard my entrance, but that's nothing to be concerned about. She's always distant and aloof. Will we order in tonight? I'm thinking some pizza would be delicious. Yurko nods. The act causes a small clump of her hair to detach and flutter to the roof, the floor. Also, when Noriko stumbled across Yuriko dying in that party, she was actually um, speaking to Yuriko like she was like responding to her even though she may wasn't dead yet she could have been actually doing the things that she said she was doing but as if you're dying on the bit the ground you probably aren't i'm i'm starting to think that she's one and the same all these people i'm looking forward to a quiet night in with my family and some pizza i never had the opportunity to enjoy these moments when i was growing up in those days i was simply grateful for the nights i could go to bed without a new bruise or gash to cover up. Also, there's no way that Aoi would get in con get a hold of Noriko's family, her corpses. There's no way. I think it's multiple personality. Mother used to kick me and slap me, but. Hang on. I look at her now, slumped on the couch, completely lost in her own world. That's not the mother that used to abuse me. That's not the mother that was married to my father. And Yuriko never used to stand up for me. That's because... Because... Yuriko was never there when I was growing up. Where was she? I shut my eyes and try to shift... Sift through the confusing fragments of memories swirling within my head. She's not my mother. This woman before me... She's Noriko's mother. That's it. That's how I know her. Wait, of course she's my mother. I'm Noriko, duh. How could I forget something so simple? 
Yuriko was there when I was growing up. The reason she never stood up for me is because no one ever abused her or abused me. God, I don't know why I get so confused and frazzled like this sometimes. I smile at my loving family and clap my hands together. Okay, I'm going to order dinner. Is everyone happy with barbecue pizza? Yuriko nods and mother lets out a quiet snore of approval. I whip my phone up to eye level and open a food delivery app. I notice that my battery only has 8% left. I should charge it before it dies on me. I keep a charger here in the living room so it only takes me a second to waltz over to the wall socket. As I lean down to grab the charger, I see another phone is already plugged in. I was going to say this is where all the, uh, the burner phones come in, huh? Another phone. The case is blue and the screen doesn't have a trace of damage on it. Whose phone is this? I nervously tap the screen and see a list of noise notifications. There are a lot of messages from someone named Junpei. I was right. Multiple personality. Junpei. It's a name that doesn't ring a bell. I check to see if the phone is unlocked by pressing my thumb against the home button. Strangely, my fingerprint, unlock un fingerprint unlocks the phone instantly. My fingerprint? But this isn't my phone. This can't be my phone. The messages from Junpei all open in quick succession. Good news. Hit me up. Waiting for you. Coffee today? Are you mad at me? Talk to me, my little cherry blossom. I miss you. Did I do something wrong? A splitting sensation inside my skull returns as my eyes devour the contents of the never-ending string of messages. I feel like I know this person, but I can't picture a face. I can't picture any scenario in which we have ever met or spent time together. That would explain why Owie never showed up for work. Why does he speak to me in such a familiar way? Wait, he's not speaking to me. Or he's not speaking to me. Of course, this isn't my phone. So these messages were never intended for me. I throw the phone aside, happy to have broken free of my concern. I don't matter. It doesn't matter who the phone belongs to. It's not mine, so I don't have to deal with it. I plug my own phone into the charger and feel relieved as I watch the battery icon slowly fill up. Okay, Mom, Yuriko, I'm going to go take a shower while my phone charges. I'll order dinner after that. I promise. Thank you for being patient. For the first time in a while, Mother actively responds to my voice. Lord. Her head lifts slightly and she regards me with her dull eyes. Mom? Yeah. Where am I? You're... Fuck you, webcam. You're not Nori. A bead of sweat forms on my forehead, and a shiver crawls slowly down my spine like a spider. Her firm, accusatory tone immediately chills me to the bone. Of course it's me, Mom. It's me, Noriko. No. You're... You're... Where am Panic settles on her delirious face. I don't exactly blame her for being scared and confused. She's been in near-vegetative state ever since she, her attempted suicide. What? For her not to recognize me? For her to forget what her own daughter looks like? That's inexcusable. Unforgivable. I'm Noriko, damn it. I'm... <laughs> I fall to my knees. The splitting, throbbing, aching pain in my skull reaches a crescendo. Threatening to blow my brains out across the living room. I'm Noriko! <laughs> uh, I have a concern. Noriko Kurosawa! Look at me, Mom. Look at me! Mother's eyes widen, she looks like she's going to vomit. She turns to see Yuriko, white and ghastly, in the seat next to her, and, the, and a tear forms in her eye. What have you done? What is this? Yes, shut up! Just shut up and be a part of my birthday. Oh my god. Did Aoi actually go get Yuriko's corpse and then abduct Noriko's mom? Oh shit, my head hurts. I don't know if she's multiple personalities or if she actually did go abduct her mom. Still on my knees, I slowly lower my head to the ground and let it rest on the soft carpet. I barely register the sound of the door behind me opening slowly. After the creaking hinges come to a rest, a strong voice floods my ears. This is Noriko. Yo, Harold. 
That's Kojiro. You're Noriko no longer. Got work for you. What the fuck? The source of the voice wanders towards me and towers above my face down form. He said I'm no longer Noriko. Can my identity slip away so easily? Can it vanish into thin air like it was never truly part of me? Holy fuck! No. I am. I will always be. I am Noriko! I leap to my feet and launch myself at the man. The man who dared to enter my apartment tell me that I'm not truly who I want to be. I barely catch a glimpse of his face before he pummels me in the nose with a broad fist. I'm on the floor again in an instant, the dizzying lights above me spinning in my blurred vision. Get your things. We're cleaning up after Corpse Girl's mess. Epilogue Noble of Sinclair. Nobel Sinclair. Hell unleashed. Achievement unlocked. The game's not over. One year later. The game's not over. Guys, the game's not over. Oh, what the fuck is happening? Oh, I can't take this. I'm so confused. It's close if it's the epilogue. Yeah, let's keep going. The book is almost warm in my hand. Oh, did I miss something? The book is almost warm in my hand. It's a pristine volume, fresh off the printing plus press paperback, though I would have preferred hardback. It's been a while since I last published a book. Years. Yeah, it was Kojiro that was writing this book. Knew it. The few fans I probably thought I disappeared off the face of the planet. I did, in a way. Not my fault. Death is death. Noble Sinclair died in a fire inside his family home. That was a long time ago. Even though my name burned to ash, my body survived. I had to pick up a new name after that. Can't wander this planet without one. This body went on living for quite a while with a new name. I even grew to like it. Then the strangest thing happened. Another fire. Inside a morgue this time. The new name went up in flames. My body survived. Again. Fate? Don't know. Felt a bit lost after that. Felt a bit unlike anybody. I decided to pick the old name back up. Dusted it off. Pinned it on my chest. Noble Sinclair. It always suited me. Mother gave it to me after all. This time, I didn't want to completely disregard my existence. The time spent as an old another man. Too much happened. I've got too much to tell. Too many tales to keep to myself. But this new book tells the entire story from start to end. How did you survive the fire? It wasn't easy typing page after page with only one arm. One of the most taxing and challenging things I've ever attempted. But now it's done. Soon, this new volume will hit store shelves across the country. The world will know everything. I use pseudonyms throughout the book to protect the identities of the guilty. Didn't print Noriko Kurosawa's real name even once. Didn't identify Junpei Matsumaru or Aoi Sato. Didn't call Tomoe Watanabe. Didn't call out Tomoe Watanabe or even that one wannabe detective that always chases me, Shinya Fujikawa. And most importantly, I didn't print my previous name. Not that name, anyway. I confess a lot of things within this text. I even confess my involvement with a human removal service. Getting caught up in that organization's web of death wasn't something I ever intended to do. It wasn't something Kojiro ever would have done. But it wasn't, but it was necessary. Necessary in order to finish this latest book. Noble Sinclair rose through the ranks of the Shadow Society within mere weeks. Chalk it up to his, or my, macabre experiences. Couldn't have done it without the connections I formed as Kojiro. Couldn't have done it, done any of this without him. I'm at the top of the ladder now, so to speak. Got a bunch of killers on my payroll. Even the dog Junpei is on my leash now. Don't know where I'll go from here. Original plan was to shut the human removal service down. Delete its existence as a final act of love for Noriko. But the power is nice. The power is intoxicating. Again, Kojiro wouldn't have toyed around with something like this. I'm not Kojiro. I look over the book in my hand once more. It's heavy. Full of words that carry more weight than they should. 
But the people believe the content of their book is out of my control. But those with a keen intellect will surely be able to piece the truth together. My eyes scan the cover and read over the large embossed letters. Corpse Factory. Novel by Noble Sinclair. I've never been more proud of my work. Okay, so Aoi did not have multiple personalities. She assumed Noriko's identity. Kojiro became like the leader of the human service, whatever. And Aoi was still a herald. She want she wants to be Noriko, but he called he called her back. He was like, no, no, you need to go do some killings. That's my theory. I don't fucking know. Wait, Crow Factory. Nori Crow Crow Asawa. Caw, caw. Wait, what? What the fuck? I've always liked the shape of my wings. Car. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How do I skip? Oh my god, it's rewritten to be a crow. No, no. It's Chromoy. Even the fucking <laughs> necklace. Are you serious, developers? Is there some sort of inside joke here that I'm not putting together? What the fuck? All right. Oh my God. An old, my favorite perch. Oh my God. It's all written as bird speak. Oh my God, Crojero. Crothulu. Oh my god. Guys, are we gonna have to play this with the crow version? Are we gonna have to play this with the crow version? Please, for the love of God, have crows. Bomb. Wait, endings. I, I just want to see the other endings, please. Which ending would you like to view? I don't know. Tell me them. Oh my god. I got the worst ending, I think. Alright, ending A. I guess we're doing the... Ending A. Noriko Kurosawa. Buckle up, kids! Three months later. Okay, so not a year. Sometimes on dark and overcast days, I can feel the cold bite of steel inside my guts. It's a phantom sensation that flickers and dissipates within moments. My doctor says it's nothing to be concerned about, but that doesn't prevent me from pulling my clothes aside to examine the skin underneath. The sight of the scar does little to comfort me. I don't think I should have survived this injury. I don't think I should have walked away after regaining consciousness. But somehow, I survived that, encou that encounter with Aoi. If someone wants to look up real quick what causes you to get different endings, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Otherwise, I'll just look them up after stream. But it would be nice for all of us to know if it has to do with the choices you actually made or not. In the darkest recesses of my memory, I can vaguely recall the warmth of strong arms carrying me from that factory, carrying me to safety. Somebody saved me on that fateful day, but I don't know who. Regardless, I owe them my life, a new life, a life that is actually worth something. A life that doesn't consist of skulking in the shadows and pretending to be a beautiful corpse. I look down at the empty plate before me and smile. I'm still not accustomed to the sight of, of a finished meal, but I'm slowly learning to love it. Hell yeah. My stomach feels full, truly full, just not full enough like I used to force myself to believe. I put on four pounds recently, four good, healthy pounds. My cheeks glow with vitality and my skin is no longer the sickly color of ghastly flesh. The waiters at the restaurant are probably getting sick of seeing me here in here every other day, but I don't mind, but I don't mind. 
eat well here, and I've learned to cook at home too. Tomoe, of all people, taught me how to prepare dinner. I never expected to study the culinary arts under someone like her. But she has a knack for bringing out the flavor in food. She says she picked up a few things from years of caring for kid siblings. I've learned, I'm learning a lot from her. I push my plate to the side and take a sip of water. Time to pay the bill and get going. There are things to do tonight after all. Uh oh. Months have passed since the last time I sent foot on these cursed grounds. A wafting stench of decay invades my nostrils and threatens to make me spill the contents of my stomach on the asphalt. It's a stench that I was once completely accustomed to. Now it's a sickening reminder of the person I used to... I used to be not so long ago. I didn't want to come here tonight. I didn't want to come here ever. Yet here I am. Call it a hunch, or a premonition, or just a bad feeling, but... Some part of my mind urged me to visit this place after receiving a strange text message this morning. A text message that seemed both alien and familiar at the same time. A solitary word decorated the contents of the message. Goodbye. But what drew my attention the most was the image attached. A photo of a young woman. A young woman bent over backwards, her face obscured by matted hair and blood, and her chest exploding open from the inside. The young woman in the photo was me. It was an image of my own corpse. The craftsmanship was excellent. A cadaver used to, used to replicate my body looked just like me. My first assumption was that the Human Removal Service sent this photo to me. But upon a moment of deliberation, that didn't seem to be the case. The Human Removal Service activity has declined rapidly as of late. The number of murders, or suicides, depending on how you look at it, across Tokyo have de de decelerated so quickly that it's almost as if the Human Removal Service never existed at all. Besides, the organization had a particular trademark when sending out doctored corpse photos. They would include instructions with the message, instructions for the victim to follow, usually involving the murder of another victim. The message I received simply said, goodbye. A corpse photo feels personal. It's typical of the work I used to perform. It's almost as if somebody took over the identity of Corpse Girl, the role that I once filled. We haven't, we, we don't know who's talking right now either. But that's crazy, isn't it? I take a deep breath and try toward the factory's entrance. We're, we're led to believe that it's uh, Noriko because the injury on her stomach and that she's said she's putting on weight. But we're not fully true about that. Head, I take a deep breath and try toward the factory's entrance. Still bodies in here, huh? I almost choke as I breathe into the thick air. The stench of death hangs like smoke inside the factory. This place looks just as it did when I was last here. The notable exceptions are the fresh cadavers displayed here and there upon the and there here and there upon the warehouse racks. Somebody's living here. Somebody is continuing Corpse Girl's work. And somebody thought it would be wise to target me as the victim. Me. Noriko Kurosawa. Okay. Somebody made a fatal mistake. Animal instinct rush rises within me as my legs move with purpose. My feet claw at the damaged concrete ground with every step. I'll kill the new corpse girl. I'll kill her and bury her. Enough is enough. I'll end the cycle of death that I started so long ago. Good for you. A meek voice slinks through the darkness, tugging aside the veil of silence ever so gently. I concentrate hard in order to identify the direction it came from. If I'm taken off guard, even just for a second, it may be my end. My left. The voice came from my left. I spin on one heel and immediately file, feel bile rise in my throat. Oh boy. What the fuck is this? My name is Noriko. Noriko Kurosawa. It's nice to meet you. Shinya didn't even question that it was a different person in the other ending? I'm confused. What's your name? Uh, Aoi? Is that you? I feel like I'm looking into a twisted mirror. The girl before me is not me, and yet... Buy a corpse? I have plenty on display. You can browse as much as you like. But that one on the end of the rack is reserved. Sorry. Bye. Vesper! You absolute legend. Why are... Why is my alerts not working again? Oh my god. I've been having so many problems with OBS and stuff lately. Thank you so much for the raid, my dude. What were you playing? Krosis? Videl? Blue Lunar Water? 
You beautiful beans. Thank you so much for popping in. What were you playing, my dude? Ocarina of Time randomizer. Yo! Yo, that's... Well, I love Ocarina of Time. I've always thought about doing a randomizer of that one, but I don't know if I'd do very... I would do very good at... Well, at that game. Um, I do want to try... Um, I did just get a PS5. And I want to jailbreak my PS4 into a Bloodborne randomizer. Here soon, though. I'm really looking forward to that. Also, they have an Elden Ring randomizer. I might want to try that at some point. Um, but welcome everyone that's coming in. Appreciate you coming in with the raid. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm Vasive. I'm a variety gamer here on Twitch. Uh, we're having issues with OBS lately. Uh, it's lost like a lot of my stuff. All my sounds, all, like my sounds completely broke. My alerts sometimes work, sometimes don't. Um, but the real star of the show is this being right here. This is Jada. Jada one cookie. Hey you Hey you. One cookie say thank you for the raid. Thank you for the raid. That's a Jada. She's a sweet bean. Um, but anyone that's coming in for the raid, uh, just for warning, there, there's a, there's content warning here. Hold on. Uh, with this game, there's, there's a lot going on in this game. So if any of those are triggers for you or something, please, you know, protect your peace. You know, take care of your mental health. Mute the stream, leave the stream, do whatever you need to do. Um, just please be careful, um, and be aware. Um, but also if you're coming in the raid, please go get some water, go eat some food. If you need to dip out and go to sleep, absolutely understandable. I appreciate you guys popping in uh, for the time being though. I appreciate you guys. <laughs> Wait, Mesber. Oh, I got you. I got you. I mis misread that. It's been a year since I played Ocarina of Time. Like, wait a minute. So you didn't play Ocarina of Time and then started the randomizer, did you? Or did you just start like, I haven't played Ocarina in forever, let's do a randomizer. Um, not really, Rosis, but there's some... There's some heavy fucking things in this visual novel. Well, also, we just finished it, technically, and we're going through... Like, once you beat it, there's... It listed the endings you could get. And you didn't have to go do anything to get them. You could just choose to watch the different endings. So that's what we're doing right now. So I don't know if maybe they just couldn't choose an ending to go for. Or they just wanted to, hey, you just played 15 hours of the game. We're not going to make you play it through all again to get a different ending. Um, even though, literally, in the 15 hours or whatever that I played in this game, there was literally three circumstances where you got to make a... A choice of one or two things so if that's really like what shows what ending you get that would suck to have to replay that so i don't know what's happening you haven't played it in forever and let's randomize it heck yeah dude you're going full balls to the walls huh <laughs> true croesus but yeah so weird shit's happening we're just we're trying to put it together i appreciate the lurk Thank you so much for the raid again, my dude. I don't know why the alerts are silent. Um, one day they work, the next day they're silent. OBS has fucked up a bunch of shit. And apparently I still haven't figured them out. But yeah, anyone that needs to, you know, go split. Totally understand. I appreciate you being here and sticking around for the raid. That's always awesome to have raids move over with people, bringing over the community. Thank you so much for trusting me with your community, my dude. I appreciate you. She runs her grimy hand through her unwashed hair and scratches her scalp violently. A fleck of spittle drips from her lower lip as her eyes glaze over. This is Aoi Sato. Despite the hair and the makeup and the clothes, my old... And the clothes, my old clothes, her voice is the same as I remember. Aoi, knock it off. They're scaring me. She stabbed you. Um, who is Aoi? She stabbed you and tried to murder -late you. Is that your name? Well, it's nice to meet you, Aoi. My name is Noriko. Hmm. The moment of clarity brings immediate understanding. Just like I was torn between my own identity and that of Corpse Girls, Aoi has become me. But her transformation hasn't been kind to her. Any recognition of her previous self has vanished. She doesn't even know her real name. After everything I've been through, I should be more forgiving to someone struggling with her, their identity. Also, for some reason switching to the doggo cam, that light turns on full blast and it blinds me. That's also a new thing, which is super cool and fun. I gotta turn it down. Uh, so much better. 
I should be understanding and sympathetic. Eh. Uh-oh. Sorry, we're, we're making notes on weird stuff in this game that I'm trying to remember. Owie. Noriko. Gasp for air as my fingers clench her throat. Oh, shit! Now we're attacking her? I ran my knee into her stomach to smash her into the warehouse racking, causing several stiff cadavers, cadavers to crash around the ground around us. Owie has lost herself. She has discarded all remnants of who she once was. I'm fine with that. I can almost relate to it. But I am Noriko Kurosawa. I have reclaimed my true self, and I won't let her become me. I am Noriko Kurosawa. And this bitch, this bitch that stabbed me and left me for dead, will not take my life away from me. Die. Yeah. Die. Shinya didn't bat an eye. No one else batted an eye that she looked different and sounded different? I press that way against the steel racks and feel something within my, her frail body either bend or break. Her dull, her dull, tired eyes begin to droop, and the hands scratching at my wrist suddenly give up the fight. Oh. I realize I'm panting heavily as I clutch her neck. Her own ragged breathing synchronizes with mine, and it's almost as though we are one person. No. She is not me. not me! I scream and feel my fingernails puncture her skin. My fingers pierce her neck and ugh, drill into her flesh, stopping only when they clasp tightly around her spinal column. Ah! With all the strength I can pull from within me, I twist my arm and throw Aoi to the blood-splattered concrete. She hits the ground unceremoniously, her lightweight body barely making a sound as her vacant dead eyes stare up at the cracked ceiling. What the fuck, dude? Who that? I never imagined I have to dig up this grave for a second time. When I buried Corpse Girl in the gardens below our former apartment, I didn't predict I'd have to see her again so soon. But here she is, still rotten and miserable. I thought her burial was going to be the end of it all, a symbolic gesture to help me leave behind the person I had become. Okay, so this is the, the linking part between the endings, I think. It was a way to reclaim my former self and bury the past. Corpse Girl doesn't say anything when she sees me lift the dirt from her resting place. She doesn't give me any indication she even notices my presence. Fine. Be that way. I couldn't care less. I've brought a friend for you. I uh, still talk to her. Someone to keep you company. Ugh. This is the good ending? With a great deal of effort, I haul the body of Nori N no. Of Owie into the narrow pit and let it collapse beside the corpse girl. How did you get the body here? No one noticed. The girl in my old clothes seems to cuddle up to her new companion. It's almost fitting that the person who became me should rest eternally beside the person I tried to become. I think I could rest easy knowing that they're both in the ground. I think nothing further can prevent me from being Noriko. I suppose I should say a few words. You were my best friend, Aoi. And I'm sorry I couldn't save you. I'm sorry that I only ever wanted to save myself. I hope that you at least found some happiness by becoming me. Goodbye. I clutch the small shovel and my hands begin to feel on the makeshift grave. Dirt and rocks pile into the pit slowly. I mistake the faint howl of the wind as a final moan from the girl I once knew as Owie. Yeesh. Covered in dirt and grime and blood and muck and god knows what else, I collapse onto the floor in my new apartment. I'm very fortunate I managed to find this place. Someone moved out in a hurry and I was able to move in right in. I was able to move right in with just the first month's rent paid up front. Don't know if I'll be able to afford the next month's payment, but I'll face that challenge when it arrives. For now, everything is finally over. I should shower or bathe or at least scrub the filth from my neck or skin. I don't know where I got neck, but I'm so tired. I'm exhausted. This is the price of being Noriko Kurosawa. I roll over onto my side and grab my phone, slowly bringing it to my eye level. An involuntary frown masks my dirt-encrusted face when I notice the icon for one missed call on my screen, an unknown number. A short message tells me that the caller left a voicemail. I don't know who would have called me at such a late hour. It's well past midnight, after all. Is it Kojiro? I close my eyes and let the voicemail play. Hey. Fucking called it. Bit late. Sauce. We should talk. What the fuck? All right, last ending. We gotta know. We 
I gotta know. Oh wait, there's a bonus ending. Fuck. All right, we have to watch that. So not quite the last. Howie and I used to always dream about getting away, breaking away from all the stress and tension of our everyday world. She dreamt of going somewhere cold for a winter getaway, somewhere she could snuggle up by a warm fireplace and drink hot cocoa and feel at peace. I told her I'd like to visit a sunny holiday destination. I don't know why I said that back then. It was a lie. I hated the sun. The harsh light and the warmth always used to leave my skin feeling prickly and scorched. Yeah, see, right? I said that when, uh, or I brought that up when she said that to Howie in the game. Because she said she didn't like standing on the porch because of the sun. However, things have changed. Through no plans of my own, for some reason, leaving me behind the life of Corpse Girl helped me appreciate a few of the little things in life. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just happy I survived. Maybe I'm just glad I don't have to keep living in that accursed apartment. I haven't fully recovered from the stab wound Owie in inflicted upon me. I haven't fully recovered from the scars she left in my heart. I don't think I ever will ever be 100% healthy again. My doctor says these things take time, but maybe a slight limp and a dull ache in my gut from time to time is a small price to pay for my life. I made the decision a few weeks ago to attempt a beachside vacation. It went well. Pale, ghostly Noriko Kurosawa sat at the beach and attempted to get a tan. I did it for myself, not for some misguided notion that I should live out a dream vacation for Aoi's sake. Aoi can go on her own damn vacation whenever she wants. It's not like she's limping around with a cane and a serpentine scar across her beautiful skin. It's not like she had to struggle against the entire world just to get on an airplane. The beach was gorgeous. The water was pristine. I'd never seen anything like it all my life. But those moments of sunshine and relaxation were fleeting. Sitting alone now in this empty apartment makes that painfully clear. I had to return to Tokyo eventually. It was inevitable. You want a dream vacation? I don't even have a dream vacation. I, my brain doesn't work that well. I, I, I can't... Like, just think to go somewhere. I have to have, like, a an idea of what I want to do. Like, I like I want to visit Norway at some point. But the actual thought of planning a vacation to go to, like, Norway or something, I'm like, ah, that's too much. I just want to think going to Norway sounds awesome. That's the extent <laughs> that I have. But it feels like there's nothing here for me anymore. Maybe I'll move once more. Go to Osaka. A Nagoya. No one in Tokyo for me. Aoi. Kojiro. They're either dead or dead to me. Tomi doesn't call me. Doesn't answer her messages. Shinya. Nothing. No one in Tokyo for me. My eyelids close gently and the sweet embrace of sleep takes me. What's up, Fragger? Welcome back, my dude. La, 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 my, oh, my. I decided to go for a walk to clear my mind. Or my head. But after returning my new apartment building, I somehow forgot my apartment number. I've only just moved in, after all. Shit. Yeah, we're doing the endings right now. How could I forget something so important? I wonder the I wander the cold hallway. My nose itches so bad. Sorry. I wander the cold hallways, trying to locate my place. Two thirty-eight, two forty-eight. Which one was it? Completely lost, I decided to turn around and search the op in the opposite direction. As I turn, a suddenly open door catches my attention. Who would leave their door open? Anyone could walk into your apartment and steal your belongings. This thought quickly scampers off as I find myself pushing the door ever so gently. It swings open slowly, revealing a room lit only by the flickering light of a television. Hello? Uh, you left your door open. Yo, Fraggers, thank you so much for good meeting, my dude. In there? Oh, we're gonna we're gonna approach that one quick, huh? My timid voice sounds unfamiliar to my own ears. I realize that I've rarely spoken in the last few days, save for the occasional pleasantry exchanged from the staff from the moving company. When no answer from within the room is forthcoming, I take a careful step inside. No sound comes from the television in the corner. It's been muted, but the screen has been left on for some reason. My eyes strain to peer into the near darkness. Once my eyes finally decipher the scene before me, I realize that I'll never be able to delete the vision that has plagued me for most of my life. Oh boy. What the fuck? Uh-oh. Did I go backwards? 
A mother hangs from the ceiling, a rope coiled around her neck like a boa constrictor. Her mouth is agape, a half smile, half scream upon her lips. Her eyes are vacant and stained black with the filthy muck of regret. And her legs dangle, helpless, unable to secure a foothold upon the chair that has fallen to the ground. The chair that I kicked out from under her when I laughed and laughed along with Yuriko. I was going to say I wouldn't... Yeah, that's what I meant when I, when I went backwards. or back in time. Although it said three months later. You're fully prepared to fund that thing myself. I need to do day by day. You're sitting at 48k. Holy crap. Birch! Space! Thank you guys so much for funding it. Holy crap. We're at 16k already. Legends. A thick clump of bile bubbles up within my throat and it takes all my strength to resist keeling over and vomiting. The body hanging above me. The soulless corpse peering down at me. This is not my mother. Yeah, it's a, it's a blonde lady. Oh, shit. She just walked into someone. Oh, that fucking sucks. This is not my mother. This is not this person. This nameless woman. She has been dead for hours at least. I didn't kick the chair out from under her. Yuriko isn't here laughing alongside me. I'm here alone. The woman isn't struggling. She isn't pleading for help or forgiveness. She isn't cursing her stupid mistake. She's gone. Just gone. Her soul has departed for whatever afterlife awaits us once we leave this purgatory. She is nothing more than a hanging corpse, nothing more than a sack of flesh and bone. The disgusting urge to throw up begins to ebb away as I stare up, up at the ceiling. The light of the television illuminates the corpse's face briefly, revealing skin gently kissed by light freckles and eyes creased with soft wrinkles. She's older than me, perhaps by a decade, but she is by no means less beautiful than I am. Her hair is long and soft, and I get a sudden urge to brush it aside, to sweep it away from her eyes and tell her everything is going to be okay. Before I can even understand it, I'm standing upon the bed in order to reach up to the ceiling. I rest one hand lightly on her shoulder, and I go ahead and brush some of those stray locks from her eyes with my fingers. If I look past those empty eyes, those empty eyes that stare at me and see everything I am, if I look past them, I see a truly gorgeous woman before me. I'm utterly entranced by her. I rest my cheek against hers. Her skin's still surprisingly warm. Eesh. Perhaps she did not perish as long as I long ago as I initially assumed. I'm sorry. I don't know why I say these words. Maybe it's guilt? Guilt. I cause a lot of people to end up like her. Force them to end their own lives out of fear of distress or desperation. No, that's wrong. I'm not guilty of those things. Corpse girl is the one responsible. It's not my fault those people died. I wasn't myself. Regardless, to think that I helped Corpse Girl destroy so much beauty makes me feel ill. What's your name? The corpse doesn't answer. A silent type, hey? Oh my god! It's okay. It's kind of cute. Just talking with corpses. My name's Noriko. Are you hungry? Can I treat you to a meal? That's one common theme between all these. Like, Noriko is just... Talk to dead people. No reply. It's okay. Come on. I'll get you down from there. Let's get you dressed. I'll put you in No. It's warm outside, so how about No, I this is no Noriko, no. Nothing. I take some time to unloop the rope from, rope from her neck and return her to the floor safely. Some part of my subconscious knows exactly how to move her carefully to dress her, to apply her makeup, and bring her out, bring out her inner beauty. I can't recall if I've done something like this before. Have I taken a corpse out to dinner before? I can't recall if I just read about it in a book or if I've experienced a similar situation. Just because she doesn't, she's dead doesn't mean I shouldn't treat her right. Just because she's dead doesn't mean she's not beautiful and worthy of my love. After a bit of time, my gorgeous friend is dressed to impress. We're ready to go out for dinner. She's not very talkative, so I'll place her order and keep the conversation going. People might look at us, they might stare or even judge us. But we'll be okay. We're two beautiful young women simply enjoying each other's company. She'll start to decay soon, like a strange flower. Name of the book. Like a strange flower wilting moments after being taken out of water. As for me, I think I've been decay decaying for a long time. I hope this nameless corpse girl can help me feel alive again. She offers me a slight smile as I take her hand and lead her out of the building. Lights. Lighting it out of the blinding lights of the hallway. I blush. That one was worse than my ending.
that one was worse than mine, I think. I, I, I prefer the hell ending. Over the bad ending. Yeesh. Did not like. Alright, one final one. Bonus. Oh no. It's Tomoe. How do we get the bonus one? God, this place is boring as hell. After all the shit I've been through this year, I simply can't believe I'm still working here. If it wasn't for Shinya, I probably wouldn't bother coming in every day. But I want to patch things up with him. If I keep talking to him in the office, surely I'll crawl my way to forgiveness. What did you do? Speaking of that son of a bitch, here he comes now. Look at him. He walks past my desk and doesn't even acknowledge my existence. How can he ignore me? After all the time we spent together. It's fucking hell. He irritates the shit out of me sometimes. I'll just have to take matters in my own hands. If he won't talk to me, I'll just make him talk. I leave my desk and stride over to him. My heavy footsteps aren't exactly elegant or befitting a lady, as my mother used to always say, but I really don't give a flying fuck. Hey, what's going on? He's, well, that's the first time we've seen a, a Tomoe first-person thing there. He's... The slurred, drawling words that drip from my mouth don't come out the way I want. That always seems to be the case. Everyone treats me like some dumbass dipshit because of the way I speak. They don't understand that it's the way somebody thinks they really... They don't understand that it's the way somebody thinks that really matters. Oh. I can't help it if I'm brought up to speak like a fucking imbecile. Blame my father, not me. Oh. Hello, Tomoe. Hello yourself. What's a gal gotta do to get a conversation out of you these days? Huh? What do you mean? <laughs> Come on. You know we don't speak like we used to. Well, we broke up. You dumped me. You ended up liking Tomoe the best? Oh, space. No, no. Why space? Well, I guess that's probably true. Cause she turned out to be the most... I shouldn't say the most sane. I should say the least insane. Out of everyone. What exactly do you expect from me now? Oh, please. You know, I'm sorry for She that. wasn't the most evil. There you go. I told you a thousand times that breaking it off with you was the stupidest thing I've ever done. So come on, get back to <laughs> I, Okay, that conversation right there was great. God damn it, I'm stupid. Get back together with me, will you? She, she, that, that is one trait of hers that I actually do find endearing. Like she is blunt and not like rude blunt. People get blunt and rudeness like twisted together. They're not, they're different. She's just blunt. Oh boy, you broke my heart. What did she do? She yeah, just broke up with you, right? Shinya, you really love me. Also, one of you said that the other one needed to forgive the other, but never found out why. I need you. I'm not normally one to get embarrassed, but letting my feelings hang in the air between us really makes me uncomfortable. You hear about my father? Huh? I wasn't expecting him to shut off my confession with a swift change of topic. Track down an important member of the human removal service. Jeez. This shit again. Can't you just let it all go? No, I can never do that. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I could use a hand if you're willing to assist. Having someone by my side with insider information would be rather handy. Don't you agree? Oh, she, she, he knows that she was insider information now or in this timeline. <sighs> I'm kind of blindsided by his request. I know that he knows everything. I'd be stupid to pretend he hasn't figured it all out by now. He knows my involvement with Noriko. He knows that I had a hand, however indirect, in the suicide cases that Corpse Girl painted across the city. I'm not going to judge you for working with Noriko. But if you can help me bring the greater perpetrator to justice, the head of the Human Removal Service, then, then I think it may have been a good thing that you did what you did. That's so... You'd forgive me for getting involved with such stupid shit. Shit? Yes. I'd have no choice but to forgive you. And maybe we can even move further forward. I know he's just saying what I want to hear. He can be manipulative in his own way. But if there's a chance I can make up for the shit I've done and win Shinya over again, then I have to go for it. Right. Sign me up then, or whatever. I'll help out. I'm going to interview the individual involved with the Human Removal Service. Are you allowed to do that? Of course. Father said I'm an important member of the investigation team now. 
I'd like you to come with me. You might be able to point out any inconsistencies in his testimony. Yeah, I don't know about that, but I'll <laughs> do my best. For the first time in a long time, Shinya smiles at me. That's it? Nope. Oh. Ah, Look at them man, sweet gamer chairs! I, you, I don't know. Can you just leave me alone? This guy is pathetic. Every time I open my mouth, he flinches and recoils in terror. Like he thinks I'm going to hit him or something. Stab him. Listen here, you little shit. If you don't spill the deets, my man here will crush your fat skull into dust. Shinya? Oh boy. Maybe you should let me <laughs> do the talking from here on out. Ugh, whatever. I back off and let Shinya take my place. I talked him up, so I thought he'd be pleased. But maybe I just annoyed him. Mr. Matsumoto. Please, just call me June. Hey, nice try, mister. I ain't your friend. You can address me formally. Thank you very much. He folds his arms across his chest and adopts the pouting expression of a child. Um, yes. Yeah, he did it. Um, Address you formally. Mr. Matsumoto, you understand why you've been brought in for questioning, yes? Yeah, man, but, like, I'm totes innocent, you know? <clears throat> I don't even know Excuse nothing me. about the human removal service. You guys think I'm involved, but you haven't given a reason why you think that. <sighs> Jenny retrieves a small pocket notebook from somewhere and flips through the pages. After a moment's silence, he clears his throat. Several witnesses, plus a security camera, placed you at the scene of a murder just two days ago. Now, it's apparent you weren't the culprit. However, your activities at the time of the incident were questionable at best. Oh, what activities are you referring to, detective man? You were cheering, and I quote, Kill him dead. Kill him dead. Yo, that don't sound like something I'd say. I want my lawyer. You can't detain me here. Mr. Matsumoto, you willingly came here when we contacted you. <laughs> you are not under arrest. <laughs> this is ludicrous. Luda! Ludicrous, I say. Be that as it may, I have a few more questions. One witness declared that you followed the masked culprit after they fled the scene of the crime. Is there any truth to this claim? No, oh, man, like... I just needed to go the same direction, you know? I've got no idea who this Harold person you keep mentioning is. Did we mention Harold? She didn't raise an eyebrow and cast me a dark look. I just shrugged. I never mentioned the word Hey, Harold. there it is. Is that the name the culprit refers to themselves as? Oh, this is like some detective mind trick, ain't it? I have the right to remain silent. I, anything I say or do... Or, or whatever can be like <laughs> I've had enough of this creeps and ain't ramblings listen up I slam my fist against the cape table and send Junpei rolling back in his seat he nearly falls off the chair but manages to regain his balance you've got two options here number one tell us the identity of that killer the person you called the herald what what's the other option number two tell us who is really in charge of the human removal service <laughs> His sweaty pulsating forehead is glowing red. What? Why is it green? I'll. I'll. I can't betray the identity of the Herald. I just can't. But the guy behind all of this? I say fuck him. I'll sell him out if it means you'll pardon my involvement. I'm guessing it is Kojiro, yeah? I don't know what caused this sudden change in attitude, but Shinya gives me a grateful nod and it feels good to have been helpful. Please, Mr. Matsumoto, please give us a name. Okay. Look, you gotta know this. I don't have all the deets, okay? I'm not as important as y'all think I am. But the guy running this whole thing? His name is Haywood Jablome. He's got an army of masked killers. An army of damaged chicks all going around killing and calling themselves the Herald. And 
the name of this ringleader? Like I said, I don't know everything. I don't got his full name. Just his first name, Kojiro? I only know him hey. as N. Sinclair. N. Sinclair. A foreign name. Although the first name could be Japanese, I suppose. Shinya is jotting the name down and confirming the correct spelling with Junpei. I find myself lost in thought in a thought far detached from this moment. For some strange reason, Noriko's face pops into my mind. I have a fuzzy recollection of a conversation with her, but any attempt to clarify the thought in my mind is useless. Shinya, is the name familiar to you? Yes. Amazing. Shinya always surprises so me. Who is it? Noriko Kurosawa once told me about a book she was reading. No, please understand, I don't share the same taste in fiction as her, so... Yeah, yeah, I get it. Get to the point. <clears throat> she used to read the most macabre, horrific stories. And she told me about one book in particular. A book about a man obsessed with corpses. Obsessed with corpses, huh? Jeez, don't that sound familiar? Wait. What am I saying? That does sound familiar. She told me about that book, too. Flower. Something about a flower. <laughs> yes. Strange Flower. A book by Nobel Sinclair. Nobel Sinclair. And Sinclair himself. Jeez. You reckon that's the guy behind the Human Removal Service? I don't know. But it's a lead. A man obsessed with the dead. Truly despicable. That's one way to put it. I've done my time in the with the sickles like that. Had enough of it, and I put it all behind me. Oh, detective man. Can I, like, go now? Absolutely why do he's, not. Why does he kind of look like Aaron? I'm getting grumps. Absolutely not. Tina turns away from Junpei and Beckett's for one of the armed pol police officers standing guard at the room's entrance. The officer walks over and awaits Tina's command. Arrest this man. Yo, that's whack. What are you doing? The police officer cuffs Junpei and yanks him out of his chair. Damn. Shinya, that was cold. It had to be done. Junpei Matsumoto is dragged away, kicking and screaming. Silence falls upon the room after the door closes in the police officer's wake. So, what now, detective man? You're under arrest. Shinya scratches his chin as though wondering why I would call him that. But he doesn't voice his... But he doesn't voice his discontent. Our next step is to track down the author, Nobel Sinclair. Maybe he's our culprit, maybe not. Either way, we won't know until we talk to him. Right on. Um, and... What about... She interrupts me with a sudden soft kiss on the lips. I close my eyes and lean into him, letting his warmth envelop me. Shinya. I couldn't have done this without you, Tomoe. And I wouldn't be the man I am today had it not been for you. Dude, watch, he's gonna be like, he's gonna get her arrested. How fucked up would that be? Does this mean you wanna be with me again? Yes. If you'll have me. My heart swells with this com with his confirmation. I've never been so happy. Shinya, of course. He kisses me again, and the fear I had losing him instantly washes away. I won't fuck it up this time. I'll keep him close to me and protect him forever. I re reluctantly break away from his embraces and hold his chin delicately. Let's his go chin find this Nobel Sinclair fucker. Delicately in my fingers. There it is. Yes. Let's find him and bring him to justice. Okay. Everyone. That was uh That was Corpse Factory. What do we think? That the last hour was besides the endings fucking finally picked up like a lot of it was really slow and just like dragged on and then that last hour was way full of more action and questions and I don't know I still have a lot of questions why was the, the words colored there was no reason was there a reason I I need to know. I need to know. Also, that crow factory. Oh, it's because the uh, the studio that made it, made it is called River Crow. That's funny. I bet you the crow factory might be short. So we might have to check that out at some point. Um, but holy crap. All right.
my friends. Let's see. Uh, maybe we can go send some love elsewhere. Do we have any friends streaming? Right. I said mute, my friends. Maybe I said unmute. Maybe it was already muted. Oh, goodness me. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Wow. Normal peeps are not shooting. <gasps> you guys want to go play Cult of the Lamb with Kim? You can become a you can become a follower in her her uh, her Kimune. That's what it's called. It's adorable. I love it. Um so let's go raid Kim. We love her. Very wholesome streamer. Very uh very calm and relaxing to hang out to at the end of a, a night. So if you guys want to stick around for the raid, I would appreciate it. Maybe uh, we can bring a smile to her face. She's got a adorable little uh raid sound alert so we can cherish that but thank you guys so much for hanging out with me remember to spay new to your pets adopt a little shop donate to risk if you can afford it or open up your house up to the possibility of fostering it is a very rewarding experience and, and helps those animals and rescues out that are very much in need anyways i'm basic thank you guys so much for letting me be a streamer tonight i heavily appreciate it i'm super excited to possibly start horizon forbidden forbidden west forbidden west i think um for uh tomorrow as long as i can get the PS5 properly hooked up and stuff before a normal stream time happens. But I'm excited, so I hope to see you guys tomorrow. And uh, I will catch you guys next time. See ya. Jada. Jada, it's bedtime. It's bedtime, come on.